So this is all the early stuff. Like all the nasty, nasty, nasties are coming hard. down this week. Yeah, they're they're either just harvested or One coming down this week. This is that. This is the outdoor crop this year. This is some of the outdoor under nets, no sprays. No, just uh, full so sun. This was just harvested. Just like, harvested. Uh, gotta, gotta, gotta. Like this was uh, starting the third week of September, the you know second week of September, yeah. somewhere along the way. Yeah, first week, Hubbles came down first week. Second week, Pams and stuff started coming down. Dog, dog beaches. But yeah, so you just and like there's dog beach. Tear into one of those. I mean, you can mutilate whatever you want, brother. Like there's plenty of this. I just grabbed a handful of something that was. So that was there. The... I'm um, I'm gonna break open that bud, break it out and touch so that sucker. Is, so what do we have? Pam, what's the? DW? There's a that's a Pam F2. That's a DW's dog walker. Mm, smells good. This is yeah, Dog Beach awesome. number. That's Dog Beach what? Really, really was that Dog Beach number two? Beach. That's no, Dog no, Beach number three. Nice. Um, no, they're different phenotypes from the same seed lot. So uh, those are the Dog Beach BX. So it's a back cross Dog Beach. So it's a Pam and a dog walker. There's a mega babe here. There's oh, there's the there's the gas right here. So those are the gases right there. They're early gases. So like I said, bacon, bacon, bacon grease and pandemic are extreme gas nastiness. Uh, those are look. I, I cannot. Those are my seed releases for the end of the year. Those are going to be Sorry, out of the control. Device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, do whatever you want to do, man. Just help yourself with all your whatever you want. I brought this for you guys to play with. So, I also brought you guys. I didn't have a whole bunch of stuff packed up, but I brought some seeds. Amazing. It's so, like Christmas in October. Yeah. Oh, where's your little seed pack? So there's a couple seed packs oh, right here for you. So I didn't have everything so, packed up. My so, wife. So one of the stuff, those are some we, awesome really stuff nice. that are really cool. So we cool. can really, pop really, some of really, these. Really, really nice. Yes. And so what do you think of the concept of just out here? So we have autos and stuff that I just want to keep throwing out here. Yeah, but yeah, then yeah. I was thinking of just like if we pop some seeds, do a little bit of supplemental lighting in the morning and at night just to keep so them in bed. Yeah. So I'm yeah. going to move this. I want to move. I'm going to move. We just put it here, and that's where we set up. And get all the plants out of here. Move is probably like right, like here. Put this one. I don't know, you know, how much. So sun. So how much is your sun rotating? Well, I mean, if you put it right here, like now, it's in the what, shade. What, what's your rationale for wanting to move well, it in the first place? We'll move it in the middle. Yeah, it needs to be in the sunniest right. spot, especially going into the fall, because we're losing sun as as it as it goes. So. If you have to move it over there or someplace else, if this is going to get shaded out during the winter, you want it in the hottest, sunniest spot possible. But what's yeah. your big rationale? Like, I want to move it away from the wall. Got it. Okay. So Would like five more feet away from yeah, the wall be all, good? Okay. That's all. All right. So really then it can just like move Yeah. Okay. It, it, why why not over. just put it right where this one is and just move this one over one way or turn this one sideways? Yeah, exactly. That's what I want to do. They're like Legos, right? Yeah. They're basically like You slide it over a few feet in a different way, you know. But yeah, throwing autos would be a suggestion for like how close they should be to one another. You know, it depends on the way you wanna do your your protection setup, right? So like either A, you wanna do a protection like you just wanna isolate this one little thing, we put a little protection like over this thing, which is a good example we should probably do. Um because it's small and easy right now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cover over it. And so, I, so I want to do that, but of course now I know I need netting as well. So, yeah. so shade is the enemy for the most part, right? right? So if they're too close together, you're going to get too much shade, right. right? So if they're too far apart, they get more. But then again, like your soil temperature and like yeah. them being able to like, you know, co-mingle and all that stuff, there's yeah. less important because you're in boxes. But this particular thing, you, you know, you're pretty much maxed out on, you know, three bigger plants. Okay. This winter, you could probably do four to six in here double the amount because they'll only get yeah they won't half get the that size big. they won't have the light even from seed even from seed. so a you could do one thing you could go directly seed get your seedlings started put them out here let them in the natural light yeah. and your seedlings will grow yeah, yeah. until they're up to a little bit more maturity so it'll be like six to ten six to twelve inches depending it's like on pseudo it autos. and then yeah and then they flower <laughs> immediately they don't you're already in that 12, 12 so you, you don't have to add any extra light or any of that stuff right. but 
if you want them to be bigger and you really want to want to do that then adding the supplemental light but then you got to deal with the cold too so like auto flowers they don't like being cold and they'll but, be mean, really in, in la yeah but we'll still be like what do you, yeah. 40 you know what i mean for a couple you know in the night and stuff yeah. like that i mean it'll be 38 40 well, yeah. you know i mean autos are more prone to like stall out when they're cold when their root systems are cold they do better when they're nice and warm they're able to be planted in the in the ground or in in something big from the start and they're able to shoot up and use the warmth in the season you can do autos they're just not going to be as as big right you know um some might do okay depending on their lineage and where they were put together but in general a colder like root system is is a slower auto in a lot of cases they'll usually go a lot you know I was um, thinking the opposite of Peter to put the autos inside where they'll be warmer. Doing, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, you throw those under a lot of light, right? You put an auto under 18 hours or 16 hours of light. I just feel like it's get, a waste you know, of the light to use. I mean, he, we, 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 have a, we have a two by four tent in there. So I was yeah. like, we put two plants in there. Yeah. And, uh, and that's just two little plants, you know. So, yeah, so, but, but, so that's what you get yeah you either like usually autos for me if i'm going to run a bunch of autos i'll just run them in my veg area during my regular veg stuff if you're running inside stuff and you got veg so they're just like in the corner of the veg area because they're getting the veg light right taking up some space there and you're getting budding plants in the veg space you know what i mean so that's kind of the way that i use autos or you plant them like late summer like june uh, you know june july from seed you know what i mean august from seed and that way by the time october and november get here they're ready you know is this ground soft like to where we can like like just stick this in the ground for a second just to kind of show it all right so wait everyone come over here for a second huddle up tom you're our <laughs> official clapper can we get a tom clap perfect okay. Excellent clap. Yeah, we can set it up over there. Yeah, just to show something. You know, I mean, if you want me to put it over on there, I mean, we could put it over the top of those plants. Well, for the purposes of the demo, mm -hmm. just the quick soft and easy. Is, yeah. Soft is here. Yeah. Um, what is? How high can you go? As high as you really want. So I brought the extra. Tom, where's the camera? Yeah, I'll oh, talk. I'm let me know when you want to. Go I'm over there. Go over there. <laughs> Right, so theoretically you can go small in the winter time. The smaller yeah. is more doable because you're in the winter, right? This mosquito netting, you can order in any size almost from friggin' any fabric store, Amazon, what have you. Sometimes, uh, here, let me throw up a third one in the middle just to make it nice and perfect. Because we like perfect. They're cheap. We have an extra one of these lying around too that we could use. It's dark. Like it's sitting right in there, Laura had suggested. It would definitely it's keep bugs out. So it's basically like our enemy are moths that show up late evening and early morning. Um, they look for the scented, they like sweet plants, but they like all plants, but they're looking for that scent. They love the buds. They'll lay their, they'll lay their eggs right on the little, the little bud points. You can see them actually. And I've got pictures on my Instagram with like a little egg on a little leaflet that the, the dude has left from the, the morning before. Um, but ultimately a bunch will hatch from their little egg sac. Usually somewhere in the middle to lower range of the plant and they always make their way north, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. Upwards, you know what I mean? So when you cut down your plants a lot of time, if you have budworms and you hang them upside down, you usually see the budworms up at the top, you know, hanging on the stems, looking for the top because they're always trying to make their way, you know, up. Uh, they like to hang out, especially when they're really small, causing the most damage inside the bud along the stem. You actually have to peel open the bud and kind of look at the stem to see if it's any discoloration or anything like that. If you don't see, because early on you won't see the droppings. Right. You know, they're so small and they're just getting started right. and they're almost invisible to the naked eye if right. you're not really looking for it, you right. know? Now so, if even one gets through, yes. are, you, are you done? Like, because, they, because the eggs 
contains so many. So if you if you catch, so chances are, right? If you have if you set up something like this and you throw it over, and I got pictures. As long as you don't have any holes in it, and it goes to the ground, I usually throw some dirt or a couple rocks on the underside to hold it nice and tight and pretty. Right. You know what I mean? So it's right. nice and taut. Right. And as soon, I grow them without the, I grow them without the the net until they're right before they until go to bloom. Yeah. So you know how big so I, to make my, your I chambers my properly, is, you know? Is, does this treatment plus the... Uh, the, the what is it, BT? Uh, yeah. Yes, no, you don't need, so, so my whole thing is I don't ever spray my flowers with anything, period. I don't, if I put two flowers on the table and I told you that this one was sprayed and this one was not, you probably would choose the one that wasn't sprayed with something first in general, right? Just as a natural, you know, that's, that's what we want. We don't want something that's been sprayed or, or, or toxified in some way. Some of those bacteria, like BTs technically, I guess they consider safe, but some of the bacteria is like spinosad and other things, and BT for, the, for that matter. I don't know how much studies going on with um, smoking it. So it's not well, in Well, I would never oh, okay. I, I'm saying spray it up during veg. Yeah, during, so during veg, it's, it's well, less saying important. It's all, you're not even allowed. So, they're, they're, so the, the, the budworms aren't even present during veg for the most part. They're not showing we up during veg. We were told you use it the second you see any uh, feces or any indication. It's at too, the earliest, yeah. you're not allowed to use it later on yeah. anyway. Yeah, so, yeah, so what I do is I send all my plants in to flower as healthy as possible. So before there's any sign of bud of anything that grown up, you, you can use BT, you can use spinosad, you can use sulfur, you can use a, a variety of things, oils, different things will suffocate eggs and stuff like that. But just- Have you heard, so so Delano, uh, who we did the soil mm -hmm. uh, yeah. fundraiser for, he mentioned uh, cornstarch, like dilute it in water and spray mm -hmm. it on your plants because they hate it. Yeah. And then he also was talking about paprika and cumin that they yeah, hate Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, I always have people like uh, use like cayenne pepper or paprika or, or those different types of peppers. And you can soak it in water and make a little, you know, but the water extract spread. But your preferred method is prophylactic. Exactly. So the deal is, is you, you can spray beforehand, make sure they're healthy and ready to rock and roll for bloom. But as soon as they start going into bloom, in You're my done. world, done. I'm done. No, You're 100%. done. I'm 100% done. We're, not, we're, we're yeah, I'm not even going to do that. So, Everyone is on that same so page. You, so, 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 you, right. so for, for $20, <laughs> you can get one of these bad boys at any size that you want. You can take one of these hoops right here. And if you have, and I don't want anybody to say like, oh, well, I have, I have you know, 10 foot, 12 foot plants. Well. So do I. I grow a lot of sativas. Mine are all nine foot, ten foot, twelve exactly. foot as it is. Just get a little couple. You don't want anyone to think you're only growing exactly, like plants. exactly. So put I know. And you can go take, three. Let's I, put this in and take a look at it. Yeah, I have, I have, I have three of these across and kind of put together with no. Here we got to jam it in because I got dirt on there. Didn't want to go in all the way. Yeah, basically, Tom, we we can cut to size. Cut, cut to and, size. Yep. Oh, we love working with PVC. Cut the size right there. Boom. Don't You're we? walking in there. Don't we love working with PVC? Right? Super easy. You make yeah. you make sure you get nah. the bigger roll and you can go three, four, five. At, at at my place I've got five or six deep, right? And you fill that puppy up with your six and you you're touching the ceiling and everything. The, the trick with this, so it's downfall, is so it doesn't have a lot of downfalls. Okay. Number right. one. It rips easy. That's a that's a problem. Right. You gotta be really right. careful when you're strapping right. it down or moving it because it does tear easy. Right. You don't want any tears. But if you're in a heavy fog area, this will collect moisture. Yeah, and, it'll and just, will hold for a little bit. Mildew. You won't have the caterpillars. You just have the powder. You don't <laughs> necessarily have the mildew per se, as long as it's like if like at my place, right? We have lots of heavy fog. Live near the ocean. Comes through during that September that that late bud finish. It fills up with a little bit of moisture, but within an hour or two, as soon as that sun comes out, it's all gone and it has no problem. I have never had bud rot or powdery mildew because of the net caused ever. It's never caused me a problem. The one problem I had was when the buds grew up and touched the net and then the net got wet and that area can get burned or damaged. But as long as you've got plenty of air and space, it's no problem. That's the only thing that I wouldn't recommend it if you're in a really wet or moist area, but Arizona, Nevada, SoCal, NorCal, uh, any drier So, so by the way, just quickly, you're, you're in Northern San Diego County? Yeah. Okay. I'm in avocado you, country over there. And, and you said a lot of your friends who are growing at home this year saw a caterpillar? So at my place, uh, I mean, 
I'm sure everywhere. Well, what was but kind of the pest? We of have more caterpillars. Worms. That's like the top problem. Okay. Okay. So so budworms. Tom, you're not alone. Budworms are the worst pest. They will decimate crops. I've lost countless amounts of pounds. I've thrown hundreds of pounds in the trash over the years. And we're not just talking weed. We're trying talking to figure like it out. What are the fruit, other fruiting crops that you deal with? So they're less damaging to other things. Like they chew up leaves and things, but these particular ones are, are budworm, like, right. like seekers. They seek this particular, <laughs> seek the you know, they seek that, that one <laughs> that we want. And because it's such a delicate plant and because they're inside on the stem, as soon as they start causing damage on the inside, that's when the rot starts to happen. It's right. not It's not because of weather, it's right, not right. because of, it's because of the caterpillars causing damage, right. that's oxidizing, right. stuff's getting messed up, they're pooping in there, there's lots of bacteria, and it right. just starts rotting the bud from the inside out. So the only way to do it is to stop them from being able to lay their eggs. And I've got pictures of moths stuck up against the side here, so trying to get through, they're like, I can't get through. <laughs> is and this and the desired size netting? And, and yes. what is, and is like, if it was a is little, the opening. Uh, if you had a window specific. screen, right? Okay. You could use stuff like this if you had to. Okay. I like using this. It's lighter, easier what to work is, with. What is, and is, there, is it a size you, difference? Is how do you how do you? Uh, so it, it's what's a mosh. the mesh size? So it's just, a mosh. Just Google, it's a moth Google netting. Moth yeah, netting. it's a it's a regular it's, it's mosquito netting. It's what you want to Google. Okay. You know what I mean? You Google okay. mosquito netting. Mosquito you can order it. Okay. Uh, or uh, fabric. There's fabric meshes. That, like if you go to a Joanne Fabrics. So or, here's or my other question places. about this: Is that do you have like zero room for error? This is a great method, prophylactic, but do you have zero room for error? Error in case, it, like if one moth gets in, you're in big trouble. No, no, no. Okay. So, so um, I've had one moth get through a hole. I've had a couple of things and you see them floating around on the inside of there. It's like, you little fuck, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or what, whatnot. And damage is so minimized, it's not even funny. And also if there, if there's, if you, what I found is I netted too late a couple times in years past, right? So like I got them growing, yeah. they started to bud and like they had already had moths laid on them before I had netted. I didn't, couldn't get the net in time. And the eggs hatched inside the, inside the tent or inside the little, the little thing. But I think that like mating and pollinization and things like that is, is, is a factor. Gotcha. And they didn't have enough time to actually cause a problem because it was before. And so I've never had a problem. Gotcha. Even if one snuck through, you might have a section where you have a little piece as yeah, long as yeah. you're, but you can, the, the cool got, thing is you see it in the morning so or monitor. the next day and you can catch them because yeah. they can't go away. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. the idea is, is if you, you don't have it, any holes, yeah. Exactly. Like you know, he, there, like next season, you're going to be hyper vigilant as soon as oh, it gets if you see, if you Night see, if you see droppings, you're yeah. too late. Your season's yes, done. Yes, yes, yes. You're you're already yes. so far behind. It's not even funny. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. so the the you have to stop it before. Where, also, where, where, also getting a dynolite or a bug zapper light, one of those dynolites that zap different moths and things like that. You can get them. Anywhere. We also, it was suggested that we get the uh, that special corn. That oh, had the BT, yeah, so, so, the genetic so, BT so corn, the, and grow the, some of that. The idea was to as that as I grow up for them like over there. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. To kill, to kill the, to, yeah, to lure like, them yeah, yeah, as yeah. a lure, you know. Yeah. The, and the it, Monsanto. It's not corn. so doing that and not being able to cover, or would you'd still lose? Right. You would still. There's too many moths right. in our climate. And we don't. We don't have freeze. And the budget. We don't have are weather. Too, they're too pungent. Like they're like they're call, they're way better than a piece of corn. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean they are cornier worms. But yeah. the you know I don't know if there's a if there's a particular one in in general that prefers the cannabis. But I always call them the bud worm because that's that's what they go after. That's what they destroy. Did you see this big one I just? That's got where they come either. from. So by the way. Tyler, which one uh, should I start on? That's this morning, that big green one in there. Yeah. Uh, do you want uh, something really tough? Like, Nat, you want some gas or do you want some, some fruit or something smooth and nice? How about caterpillar. something that's going to make me work nonstop? That I've been plucking off. Okay, so then, like, My one, of, one of these are going to be your sativa Great leaning hybrids back. right here. Uh, the dog beaches. This is my jar of or worms. this <laughs> pan <laughs> dead worm dead and dying i'd say hey plucking off my plants go with number two or number three you pinch pinch one of those pinch one of those buds and check out dog beach number two what or would number you like three. to drink i'm good i got a okay. yeah i got a big cooler in there okay. man i appreciate you greatly thank you sir dog beach number two or three yeah those are gonna be more sativa um leaning 
more on the more on the fruity, nice, funky side, coffee. pineapple and lemon and. And so you so this is, you cut this when? Uh, like, the dog beaches came down the second week of September. Okay. Right, you know, like and September, now, September tenth. Uh, October. Yeah, September 9th, September tenth, something we're like now that. October yeah. what? Uh, we're October. Tom, what's the? 12, I don't know, twelfth or something like that. Okay, so about a month ago. Yeah. So we also just put. Yeah, these we're tenth, October tenth. So about and, exactly and a month so, ago. So these are all early finishing, basically. Yes. And then what's late finishing that's still going? The bacon grease. Yeah. The pandemic. Yeah. Uh, the real dog walker, like my real, you know, my real dog walker crop, the real crop of dog walker, and. Um, how much? What else is out there in the pine tar kush? They're all still out and there. And what do you grow in? Like in pots? In the... No, man, I do. Uh, I mean, I grow in everything, to tell you the truth. But like but during the fun. summer. I would ground. love a drink. During <laughs> do, you, the... do you have the bubbly water? Dude, I got your water. <laughs> <laughs> during the summer, uh, we do a, I do big outdoor crops in the ground. Mm. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what's your setup? Tons you're you're growing in the ground? Yeah, for outdoor, I grow in the ground. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I have some stuff in pots, like the random, the straggler clones and things that like don't make the cut, or the ones that I need to just give away <laughs> or whatever that aren't gonna get put out. But they don't deserve the ground. Oh, yeah, every <laughs> every year, yeah, there uh, there's a couple of those chambers that'll go up. Well, you want to sit for the uh, make what? yourself. You want to sit on the couch? Yeah, I'm gonna just grab a seat out. right here. I'm gonna pick out a little uh, DW right here. Is what I'm gonna smoke right here. Do some face melting. <laughs> Who's, whose little babies are these? Those are me, man. Oh, those are my at, three, man. Yeah, look at yeah my, I was actually faces. in the emergency room last night, man. My, huh? They were playing uh, Knights, and my oldest hit the middle child in the head with a golf club. He didn't block it all the way. He had a pillow, and they were playing Knights, and he missed it and sliced open the top of his head. Thank God it was all that, was, all that happened. So life and, so, uh, uh, didn't need stitches. He needed, yeah. We went to the hospital and they actually glued him back together yeah. up there. Sometimes yeah. they'll just um, just use uh, staples. staples. That's what they yeah. said they were usually only using the head, you yeah. know. But he had this hair type that allowed him to to glue it. I'm like, thank God, because <laughs> oh, that'll be better in yeah. terms of a. Uh, yeah, he's four. He doesn't want no staples in his head, you know. Oh, <laughs> you couldn't sell him a staple. <laughs> like, like <laughs> uh, you want him a staple in your head, buddy? Like he would know. No. <laughs> so. And this was the four-year-old. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's what I did. Okay, so so you're and is this like in your yard or where are you? So yeah, for my for my home garden. Okay. Yeah, for my home garden. Yeah, I have you know. So is it kind of yeah? You're gonna have to send me some pictures. So, all right. Yeah, so, heck so, yeah. So, so I have a big I have a big like I mean I got like almost an acre little okay. plot of where I live where I live and like in the back area there's it, it's we call it the food forest and there's like sixty something different fruit trees back there. On and your property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I nice. planted them all. I could oh, I put I put how in this orchard. You, you know, I've been there. This is year six now. So when my when my son, yeah, and, basically and he's six. Some, and what that's were how some I know. of the first fruit trees you put in? Uh, I had I had thirty or forty or so that I carried with me from um, all my different homes in pots. They were they were my traveling <laughs> orchard until I could find the place to plot them. But they were like things like, uh, you know, there's some Hollywood plums and nice. different rare tangerines, like the 88-2 tangerine. So how far afield were these? Like, did they come from other states? No, so I'm, a, I'm, an, orchard, I'm an orchard specialist. I'm a, oh. I'm a fruit tree guy. So what I do is I go and I do diagnoses on home fruit trees, orchard, uh, orchard, uh, commercial orchards, home orchards. Uh, we turn little spaces like this into productive like food forest areas, like we put like five to six, we could ten do that different here. trees. So uh, that'll that be bear, our next episode. You know, we like put every these month. two in, by the way. That one, the uh, the ficus. Yeah, the ficus. And the little bugle bush. And the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is usually a bush, but it can be turned into mm -hmm. trees. They're small. It's considered a small, a yeah, large bush, small tree. So beautiful. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Flowering. Um, yeah, so like that's what that's what I do with like fruit. So we pick certain varieties that all ripen at different times, and that grow in your area, and we take care of business so that you can always kind of be pulling something from your from your orchard and then yeah in in a, in accordance with that lots of these people who have the the time and the money and the space they like cannabis and they want to grow some of their own cannabis too so once they figure out that you know 
we're friends on that on that regard, then they can usually get their you know garden <laughs> set up with some of my genetics. So Do I can you see, yeah. see those You're gardens. Like, for yes, them? yes. Well, I don't. Yeah. So like, I mean. Some I do, some so I don't. So you come in selling them your fruit tree services, and you walk See, out selling them your your genetics. Well, yeah, in some cases, <laughs> no, but it's but it's I think it both because it's like it's it's a right. it's a thing. So like my fruit thing is, um, like in the fruit world, like I, I, I mean I teach everywhere. I do all kinds of funny stuff. Like, so let's I'm talk like, fruit. I'm the fruit. I'm the fruit guy, dude. Yeah. Like that. My, my license plate doesn't say Mr. Trees for nothing. So that was my question. Like, it's not like, other it's not, crops. You, it you really does. In fruit yeah, fruit. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I know I know about all kinds of stuff. Okay. I work my life but, in nurseries but, but you, and farms. So you just but, yeah. mentioned a specific plum cultivar. What was it? That's the Hollywood plum, yeah. But you, it had like a number. Oh, that's the tangerine, the 88-2. So, so Okay, so, yeah. so the tan, like, is that like who, was that like bred at UC Davis? And yeah, like, so can, basically. Can you, can you talk about like what you've seen in fruit breeding versus like your experiences in cannabis breeding? It's uh, so like every year I get a shipment of trees, like a little bundle of like to trees. To test out or something? To test. Like, like here's testers, our new. Right? Yeah, exactly. So like you get ghost apple or that's... blue aries or like you know neck to plum there's so, yeah like all these like weird the whole things, apricot you know? peach well mostly apricots there's, that, there's yeah, so many there, at, yeah at there's, the there's farmers there's, market there's apriums too like all these new wow. hybrid fruits like apricot plum crosses wow. and like so, these so, are pollen crosses so they're yeah, not so what's they're the not explanation like there would that be like if a dog and a person like <laughs> had sex and had no like a no no partial, like, no because we're not related so like Peaches, so plums, apricots, enough. yeah, nectarines, they're all part of the same family. Is this commercial part. breeding or all just like individuals doing it? Uh, well, in a commercial, the ones that I'm talking about are commercial. Like there's a there's a family, like the um, Dave Wilson Nursery is a good thing. It's like the Zyger family does a lot of things. Uh, there's a bunch of different families that are commercial breeders that create most of the modern fruit trees and grow all the traditional fruit trees that sell to all the nurseries around. So all every time you go to like a nursery to buy whatever, you know, all the fruit trees they stock there came from, you know what I mean, Dave Wilson Nursery or Ellie so Cook Nursery or one of those nurseries. So if they create a new fruit hybrid, will that make its way into the... It does. So the fun, the difference between fruit hybrids and cannabis hybrids is it takes like somewhere between 8 and 10 years, 8 and 12 years to create a new fruit variety to make sure that it's good. It takes you a long time because basically you, you're, taking a, you're taking a plum, a plum flower, you know, pollen and a peach flower and you're going to take and rub those together and you're going to that fruit's going to grow you're going to plant the seed from that from that mother plant you know fruit you're going to grow out a bunch of those and then out of that you do the pheno selection which one turns out to be t delicious which one and this isn't production. all in the same season you plant this isn't it. all this the same season like, this so, takes so over how long years. does it take a, a plum tree to start fruiting uh somewhere around you know five to ten years depending on the variety <laughs> so, if so they graft it and if it's, do, I mean, do it can they be a need long to be time, aware yeah. of whose uh, seeds they're using or whatever because they're treading on someone's patented so know. yeah they do a lot of the patenting of their of their variety so they do a lot of those own so all those like like the neck to neck to plum or so it's the, highly ip uh, they they start breeding. patenting those yeah um yeah. which is cool like one of my favorite things is uh like the pluaries they're they're just they're to die for it. Plums and blueberries. Plums and cherries. Cherries. Get so like it's like a plum. It's like a try. gigantic friggin' cherry with like that cherry crunch and like that cherry texture with like the plum complexity and juice and like all that extra stuff wow. the plum brings. And right? then and they can hold you, on the tree for a long friggin' time compared to all the other stuff. Too. And then can you breed that? slightly in the direction of one or the other like if you're like i like this it's a 50 50 but i'd love it if it were like 80 cherry so they 20 have plum. so they so out of that seed lot when they made that initial cross right or whatever out of that seed lot there's one that leans more this way there's one that leans more this way and then there are other varieties so there's like candy heart pluary there's like uh sugar twist there's flavor punch there's all these other it, varieties of pluary, and those it, are just variations of in it. In the you know? grape world, my mind is blown by the uh, cotton candy grape. Yeah, yeah. It's That's the same like, idea. My, yeah. my daughter's just, <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm like sitting there like, yep, this yep. is really fucking good. And that's what they do. They come out with these new cool varieties. Like the, the cool grape that I'm growing this year that's kind of new is like the, the finger grape. They're like these, they look like little fingers. They're, long and, they're yeah. long and skinny, you know, the lady finger or fingerling, or I forget what they're called exactly, but uh, the, the finger grapes are pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so like we, all, every one of those types of trees has a certain growth requirement, a certain amount of cold that it needs. Every type of, like a, like a 
a fig tree fruits on new growth or persimmon fruits on only the new stuff that's grown out that year a peach fruits on last year's growth you know and and that that second year growth is where your fruit is and like apples fruit on spurs so you got to know which type of tree you're dealing with and where the fruit production is going to happen in order to not screw up your season and like uh cut off your you know your productivity and stuff like that but it's like more of a you know a lifelong thing it's going to be a you're in so, the game well, so, for so, years so, you know? so it's interesting because it seems like those fruits are much more microclimate sensitive than like if i took your seeds i could plant them in a bunch of micro like oregon yep. maine <laughs> down here for in sure. la for indoor, sure. outdoor and it'd be like i know express myself differently but i will still make it yeah what's so the hardiest fruit <coughs> Ooh, that's tough man um does cannabis count <laughs> it's a fruit. It's, right? it's, it's, it's a fruit. fruit. You know, lemons, limes, grapefruits right. are all pretty pretty tough. Those, right. those well, origin wait. fruits, you know, yeah. pomelos, you know what I well, mean? Well, but a, a lemon couldn't um. grow in New England. So, so are, do you mean hardy by, like, That's yeah. right. taking That's right. Or, or, like, for they'll travel for to their the grocery environment, store. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, those, like, so whenever I go investigate an orchard, like, say somebody has a, a house, has an orchard on the property, the person dies, the house sits barren for a few years you know what i mean they turn off the water the orchard it just kind of runs downhill and then somebody buys the house right then my phone rings and like yo we just bought this house it's got an orchard here a bunch of the trees are sick can you come help us you so know the trees I mean? are still alive they're just some <laughs> of them are some of them aren't when i get to this place 90 percent of the time the bear's lime is alive like a loquat is alive yeah. you know there okay. are certain trees that are always like you know among it all they're like <laughs> fuck and they're not happy they're like the but microbes the, that can go dormant the tough ones. for so yeah does that mean a fruit trees don't survive unless they're cared for most of them don't really mm. uh i mean unless they're a wild fruit tree but most of our modern varieties they're gonna need yeah. you know they're gonna need water they're gonna need uh, you know the appropriate amount of cold or they're sun. like chihuahuas I mean, they're, yeah we've been we've been <laughs> you know these are these are cultivated fruits wow. they're not they're really fruits. domesticated yeah you know, they're very domesticated yeah. so I mean, you can plant things and not do a lot to them. And that's what my it's, whole trip is, it, is like set it up so that it is a natural, natural system so that all you have to do is just kind of be that, that shadow kind of watching out and do a couple of things here so or there. So what, what are some of the things, like on those properties, you're like, okay, I can save about 40% of these f trees. What are you doing now? Like, are you just literally being like, let's turn the the irrigation system back on? But like, yeah, pretty what, much. What, what are some other things that you're typically doing? Like? So yeah, so we we look at like the conditions. Like, is it are they desolate de desert conditions? You know, what are the soil temperatures? Like, what uh, how do they even have water there? Is it completely broken? Uh, how hard is it going to be to remediate? But basically, essentially, it's get a bunch of crap that's going to cover your ground put some clothes over your skin, you know, some sort of debris, some mulch, some plants, some forest floor, I call it the forest floor. Let's get a forest floor going. And then we need to turn the irrigation on. And I usually, you know, I usually recommend like, you know, a topical spray type irrigation or some sprayers of some sort so that we, we complete the circle of life. Like rain falls from the sky, hits like, the surface. Like drip emitters or, or like, a, like I, a sprinkler? So or with, sprinkler? Yeah, like sprinklers are my, my so, so during the drought and like the crisis and all these things, like we all, these commercial orchards, all these people shifted to drip, right? And they have these little drip rings and stuff that go to tree rings or whatever. I, I call those tree killers, you know what I mean? So in a perfect world like i have my my thermometer and we can do a test and i'll show you when you when you shoot the ground right like number one in nature where plants grow on their own and we're not you know you'll always see a forest floor or a covering you know some sort of duff that, that regulates the temperature the moisture levels all those things the nutritional the the life levels all those things are regulated by this forest material of accumulation of stuff so when we have it all cleaned out like this or we have that stuff and we're just using a drip emitter right next to that drip emitter it's dripping and it's watering next to there it's not as wet or it's dry next to it, it skips places and then beyond it and in between it you're skipping places where the water isn't evenly kind of coating and you think about like a rainstorm right she rains everything gets wet for the most part you know what i mean it's raining where the tree is where the tree is not and beyond and, and beyond and that is that's the trick in order to kind of flush out the contaminants that have been collected on the surface push down the, the fertilizers or animal poop yeah, to the newly hydrate that stuff. stuff to keep that yeah. first layer 
you know, evenly moist so that when you scratch in the soil here, it's moist in 75 degrees and you scratch over here, it's moist in 75 degrees. But when it's uncovered, the temperatures fluctuate so drastically from like 60 to like 140, 60 to 140 and nothing wants to live there. Nothing wants to live without that AC or that irregularity. And then there's no nutritional elements or homes or anything like that on the surface of the soil to protect any of those things that would be you know wanting to live there which the plants need to get their nutrition to cycle nutrients to kind of keep them together because they can't friggin' move so they need as many friends and family as they can <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean around them as best possible it's to, like to, in tom order to take bringing care of the business. party to his house yeah. that i that that was always my power move is like why don't i just have everybody come to my house and then i don't, yeah. don't have to move yeah. <laughs> that's it. I get that's to see it. all my friends yeah then... yeah and you're just and you just you know and that's a plants world you know you're just trying to accumulate as many cats over here that can help you out and do different things and the only way that's gonna happen is if the soil temperatures don't jump around like an SOB and there's material there that's gonna keep it moist and even and if there's food for fungi and you know that carbon is returning. So should you know? we send Tom out there with a the thermometer to So Yeah, we can we can test <laughs> we can test all of that. We can but, play around. Yeah. But you know, um, Tom, have... in a couple months you'll be wearing some sort of like Tom will have his tool belt. <laughs> yeah, you know, man. Walking They're really around well out it, brother. His tools of the you, trade brother. ready I'm to. Um, I mean, these are these are soil probes. My my, yeah, you know, my horn, Tom, horn, you, you know what I mean? One of these. It tells Sweet. me you know yeah, exactly. inches and shovels. So, I can take you know so depth what about meters. Like other pests, like to also like keep an eye out for you know pests and worms that you might not. And obviously, there's a point where. Like we had, I had several very hungry praying mantises, but they didn't do their job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tom nah. will not let it go. He will not forgive the praying See, mantises. I mean, I'm okay. I'm okay. They with were like, mauling things. I mean, I'm okay with like beneficial predators more so like indoors i'll rely on them gotcha. more so on an indoor environment like right. i'll rely on you more right. indoors you right i on... want you to be here in the outdoor right. environment to help out on whatever i'm missing but there's no way to rely on that like when people say order you know trichogamma or whatever the wasp is that gets the worms and stuff and i mean for outdoor i mean unless you're that was my question. <laughs> it's like, fly away. i mean <laughs> fly away. yeah that's what I, my question is like okay and you some might work and it might do some good and i'm not saying it won't yeah. but if you had a place to like trap them in a greenhouse well or, or even another, just the Netting. Even something yeah. along those lines, so you, can, you can kind of ensure that you don't have any of those well, things. Well, let me ask you, right? do you ever do that? Do you ever like toss a wasp? I in? don't. So, so <laughs> like I'll throw a praying mantis or two in. Okay. I catch them at my house all the time. Gotcha. If like early, early in veg, if I have a, a greenhouse or a tent set up, I'll throw some ladybugs in there. You know what I mean? And it's not for like a guarantee it's just, don't, just to don't, increase yeah. the my 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 help when i'm not my eyes aren't on the game and like i said i'm not going to rely on that when it comes but i i like i like using i like using oil sprays like there's like different you know uh, like doctor neem doctors makes an oil where it's like peppermint and thyme and you know rosemary and clove and it's like this little assortment that works pretty good and that actually messes with cells well, that's and things what I'm does pretty there's good. gotta be some homemade um, something that like with a pepper there's or something there's like yeah doesn't sulfur do any harm, but they don't like it sulfur does everything mm. like if i ever have like a problem like if i have thrips thrips and budworms are my two biggest enemies right thrips are my enemies indoors budworms are my enemies outdoors you know for the most part i don't really care so much about the the thrips outdoors because my plants are growing so healthfully and everything's doing fine it's not the end of the world but indoors it can make things you know pissed off so like sulfur is one of my favorite things and you can just use sulfur and it's tough and it's not the funnest to mix, but it works really good. And as long as you're using it in veg, Tom, show them your uh, you're, sprayer. You're, you're good to go. But sulfur, oil, you know, spinosad is fine. I know that spinosad, when you, if you ever use it in flour and stuff, I know that it's, it's pro I think it's on the ban list for California yeah. still. And, and it's because it can We've all already agreed we're not spraying no anything spinosad, during flour. You know, but yeah, that's the thing. But you can use spinosad, not in flour. And it's a bacteria that kills thrips, mites, worms, all chewing insects and things like that. So if you use it appropriately, I think that that one is okay. Uh, in oh, folder. sorry, Tom. I wanted to, where is your little um, thing of worms? I mean, but uh, you just want to, you just want to like, like I said, you just want to make sure that you're, you're, you're clean. And if you just did like a once a week oil spray, you know, and then you change it maybe once a week, you did oil once a week, you did some soap. And then once a week, you could keep everybody kind of at bay for the most part. You can make garlic sprays. You can make pepper sprays. You can do stuff like that. But none of that is going to stop that. Tom, I like you your know? collection of... 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so these are the ones I, I took off my tobacco plants uh, today. So I want to see if they're yeah, in the check same out the family. Difference. Look at this yeah, guy. Yeah. I think this guy is the same. What do you think? Yeah, it's pretty damn close, man. Yep. A little bud worm there. I mean, there, there's one. so many different moths and so many varieties. But then and this all, one's darker. And they all, well, depending on what they eat, so this depending maybe, on what they eat, they'll be different colors. Wow, well, that's much darker. You know, they Although can be different colors be, just by what they're, uh, you know, how they're cycling or where, where they're they involved, yeah, what yeah. they're doing. Yeah, I mean, I, you can have bright orange and bright yellows and browns and stuff. Um, but they're all doing all essentially the same the thing. Same. Yeah. His is a, a specific, you know, I, it's the, it's I'm the, not an uh, animologist. Corn, but, corn ear worm moth <laughs> Tom I was gonna leave these caterpillar with you because you are such you're a good collecting host. them yeah, yeah he's such a good host of the caterpillars <laughs> he's collecting them yeah those bug while worms he, it's like the he, actual while bud he's worm. the grim reaper for plants he, he's the uh he's the collector of caterpillars he, he's like the uh the the fertility god for caterpillar <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and I'm going out because I need to now. But Tom, I swear Tom's to you, man. Now like it. a good friend of mine, he's a. <laughs> this is his second year growing, and he only grows outdoor. And my so, fingers are all <laughs> sticky from prying in in and through the buds. Messing up your buds. Yeah. The first year, he did not put up any, <laughs> any nets, and I kind of, you know, I didn't really push for him to put up the nets because. You won't really know unless you lo you learn and you know. You Thanks know how a lot. So you yeah. wanted to give him a like, learning experience. <laughs> I didn't want to be like a dick, but I didn't want to be like you know like you have to do this. But this year he's like he got good enough and he did good enough last year. He learned and and this year he's like all right, what do I do, man? How do I stop these worms? I'm like, all right, man, this is what we do. And I he told was ready him, to listen. And now. he friggin' <laughs> and he set up these killer chambers, man. And he like put these and he had ten foot pams in there that are just just arms are just dangling in there just like this never got touched with anything you know what i mean he's like sitting there he's like i don't know how you do it trimming all this stuff and he had nothing last year he was completely without spending money and it was so all tom, because well, of that 20 dollar so, so net tom, you know tom, what i mean tom, it was like all tom's, because of that tom's emotions have gone like from yeah. the highest highest to lowest low so yeah, tom like next year when there. you have those 15 foot tall plants with massive thorcox, i promise you dude Yes, I promise you. I'm not even bullshitting. Like it's you been a will year, be over because year you will know. Deployment. You will appreciate yeah. it. Had we done not it everybody... this year, you wouldn't have appreciated it as much. That's what I mean. You have to go through it, man. You really have to get kicked in the friggin' gut, dude. Well, I, really I did. Think... Everybody has to. I have man. a feeling. I have a funny yeah. feeling that even if we had gotten our IPM guy here when we wanted to, he wouldn't have done that. No, it really might yet. have even been too late. Yeah. Because I have a funny feeling that we, you know, I was. In the as best. soon as you start seeing pom poms and and hair start getting thrown, that's when I put up the net. That's right. I mean, even so, maybe even a week before that. Exactly. You know a, what I'm saying? So, you know, so that you're a little bit more proactive. Okay. But they usually don't seek out those little tiny pom poms. They wait for you to yeah. get. And, and, and something we, substantial we found, to kind of go after before clear, you start for yourself. Doing it. You yeah. don't go like okay, week nine they go up. No. You do it by observation. Observation. Okay. And I never put them up before I'm ready to go into flower because I've put them up before early and then they grow into the thing and then like trying to redo it, you couldn't get the net in time gotcha. for the right size. You know, you're like, oh shit, I need six more feet. And you're like, then you can't get it. Oh. You know what I mean? And then you're missing time and things are messed up and then you, you lose. Wow. So if you, I, yeah. if you wait until like, <laughs> it's like getting to that, to get to that point. have to do like a two story I went, structure I went to out Las here. Vegas, you know, to just for a few days, just really just overnight to shoot this indoor to hit the bunny soil ranch. grow in Pahrump. Mm -hmm. Really yeah, beautiful. Yeah, up. I was there. Yeah, Steve, I've, Steve I've Cantwell's seen a couple place. There, Steve yeah. Cantwell's place. Yeah. And in fact, you were mentioning this. If you look at, and he uses these pots. He has this beautiful uh, underbrush for the entire length of it. It's total consistency, even though it's inside with the mm -hmm. lights. Just what you're mm -hmm. talking about. Mm -hmm. I have, we have to look at it again to see mm -hmm. exactly what that plant is, but it's... Yeah, no, I, yeah, anything yeah. that covers. I don't care yeah, if it's, it's, if it's yeah. living or if it's, it's a, a, little, a it's carbon. Totally alive. Okay, so, it's so, that, so yeah, get, getting, getting back to the yeah. fruit trees. So, so when you, all right, you, you like start reviving, but then you want to bring in that cover layer. What are you bringing in for like someone's two acre so, property that... 
Yeah, so it depends on their budget. Like, what do you want to do? Is this property, like, surrounded by big-ass trees that we can use If budget utilize? were not an issue, what would you want to bring in? Bring in a few truckloads of some sort of bark chips that are good mulch. quality, you know, bark chip mulch. Mulch is a touchy word because sometimes, like, mulch is, like, half compost, half bark. Or there's, like, a... It's, good mulch. It's a, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, like, you know, more Some nutrition. people get offended I just want. I just want some chunks. I want mulch. some... I want, yeah. I want a variety of particle sizes, just a, a chopped up tree of the bark for the carbon source. Oh, and you the want protect, the bark? I want the bark. That's what I want. I want that Cause, actual cause carbon, did, that, did, that did. bark and that shredded material to actually last a long time, create I thought shade. The bark, but I thought the bark doesn't absorb water, like the it, wood on the inside. It will over a period of time. Once, once you walk through, like, so if you had like a nice little bark layer of something that was a couple inches thick, and you're watering it topically, you know. The first thing we always do when we put out bark, I always tell people go out there and really overhydrate the area, like so that we can saturate the bark really well, so that the bark can kind of absorb as much water as it can, and then it really start releasing into the ground. And then once you do that, like we start the regulation train down the hill because it's covered properly. It's not fluctuating in temperature. It's everything's kind of starting to work work where it is, and the water's actually getting through the bark and into the into the soil there. So you start really rejuvenating. Do, your soil. Does the bark take longer to decomp uh, to decompose than uh, like the inner wood? Uh, yeah. I mean, That's yeah. What I would think. Yeah, I mean, it takes. I mean, there's a there's that sheath, and it takes a little bit of time. I and mean, you can use the inner wood. You can use the outer wood. And there's no magic thing. Like I wouldn't say buy this one particular bark. So would I you? I would actually it, prefer a multitude of different things. Well, like that's a what I was going to ask. Collection. You wouldn't just want the bark. You'd also want some in, inner wood pieces. Yeah, inner wood, like and I want leaves, and I'd want some twigs, and I'd want some okay. some different things like that that were. So pretty much everything you would find on a forest floor. Exactly. That's why I always <laughs> I would say, take the forest floor and. Pretty it. much, we want to create okay, a freaking forest floor and and and, peop, and if you and i always tell people too like if if you have a tree like here and then like six or eight feet away from it you have another tree right i try to tell people to stop treating the trees as their individuals and start watering that entire space like it's one living thing like care for the soil like it's one living thing and if you have a problem watering where there's no plants or no trees put a plant there so that you are forced to water this area so that you keep that even moisture and temperature level consistent so that over time your soil actually becomes alive and then once it becomes alive you're stocked with dead bodies and moisture and all of a sudden it's holding water water is traveling farther it's absorbing more like a sponge and you're using less you can back off on your water when you make your soil actually a living thing instead of alive dead alive dead and you lose communication you lose all these different benefits that you can have so it's like retraining people to care for the ground first and then whatever trees we we have and whatever trees we're going to put in are going to jump out of their skin because they're going to be able to to fall right into a good place where they want to be and then also planting new trees planting them high instead of planting them down in pits you know for the most part i mean that's i'm a big I'm a big like, believer in plant it high and it will and it will thrive and plant it low it won't grow and if you look at any like tree that's growing 100 feet in the air and we can go out there to that front tree I didn't see any of those trees out there but they're big giant trees we can look right where they meet the ground and you'll see two things one it'll be up on a little bit of a mound yeah. kind of just slightly up in a mound and two as soon as the trunk hits the ground you'll see the main root crown of the soil right at the surface of the soil it'll be busting up the sidewalk it'll be right there at the surface right where the trunk meets the ground and a lot of people will plant a tree too deeply to where you'll have to scratch next to the trunk of the tree for a couple of inches before you can find that main root hand and you got a couple of inches of bark that's under the ground or under the mulch and then that bark becomes soft and you start rotting out that cambium and all kinds of problems start right because of the bark itself isn't supposed to be under the ground that way the root system is but once you start you're like a slow strangle, a slow kill, and it can take years, it can take months, but you're, you're really hurting your tree uh, on, on that level. So a lot of people dig them in these big pits. Well, so if you were on a property wanting to plant a new tree, you'd build an area up a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I just wouldn't dig as deep of a hole is what I would do. So I would dig, a, I would, however big the plant it, root ball that I was planting, I would dig it a little bit more, like an inch or two more shallow and I would dig it a lot wider, so width is more important than depth. But like you're happy with that plant. It's better off there than, than, than another way. Than yeah. that one. The one thing that I would do, like on like one of those, instead of just having a mound where the water and everything can just run off and away, like you plant it up on, on, a, on a little crown and then 
three to four feet from the trunk of the tree, I kind of build a little bit of a basin or a little bit of a berm just to kind of focus a little bit of that water at a young age so that when it's a young plant, you catch in that water and it's not running away. You got a little bit of a berm, but it's actually sitting in a little island, like in they that berm, that. and you can fill. They did that. They, I, yeah. I didn't put that in, actually. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, a gardener did, not the regular gardener, but a guy who, who knows trees. Yeah, the yeah, landlord yeah. Brought, wrote over. And there was a, like a little moat. Yeah, and over time, it. after it'll wear down, and that's fine after yeah. it's done that and because they told it's kind of established. Go, Focus your water in yeah. here, and so it's going down. And it's yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as it's not a pit, you know, a lot not of things, and and it, that's perfect when you're up on the crown like that. That's perfect. But like I said, every time you see a tree that's like out out front there that's doing really well at any park at any place, you'll take notice. Like you'll notice that those two things for sure, and then that third thing is the cover on the ground. Is it in a forest floor situation, is there a lawn, there's some sort of regulation of the temperature, or it's extremely thick and was allowed to get that way because there once was something under it, and then that canopy is now shading that soil, so it's okay there. And then they're able to kind of get away with murder, you know what I mean? But that's like, that's how that gets to that point. But it's really important, like just planting your trees at the right level and then actually caring for the environment around them as opposed to them per se, you know what I mean, first then you'll have a lot more success and they'll start doing things. Then you gotta learn about your tree. Then you gotta figure out what the hell kind of tree it is, when, you should, when, you, when should you prune it, you know, what, what's gonna pick on it, you know, stuff like that. But if you've got a healthy environment and you've got cover and it's even temperatures aren't fluctuating around, all of a sudden you've got organisms and mycorrhizal and all kinds of things that are protecting that tree, actually sitting on the roots, around the rhizosphere, things like that, defending, you know, pathogens because they're able to and they have those things. And then you have a whole system of, you know, microbes that are on the surface of the soil taking up space so that when that powdery mildew spore shows up or whatever shows up, it's consumed by the other organisms around it or is not allowed to take purchase. There's no vacancy and no sugars for it's them. It's like you know the shitty I mean? new surfer you know? trying it's to hard. show up exactly. in a surf spot and all exactly. the surf in the water There's like, too many the stuff that like, nah, here. bro, there's no, no vacancy. And it, it's harder for it to do so. Plus, by having like a microbial relationship and having all those parameters set just in the soil level, all of a sudden, the plant's getting the nutrients that it needs at the right levels that it needs by the right organisms feeding it instead of us trying to kind of cut through the system. And then the cell walls of those cells that build that friggin' plant are harder, stronger, and you know, almost impenetrable to, to insects and things like that. Plus it's cycling the sap, so it's not having an overabundance in nitrogen, which is causing the sap suckers. There's a million things that that'll just like Can you eliminate, talk about you know? that a little bit? Like the sap going through the so plants. like, yeah, what, so what like, do you call it? We like a not a vascular system, but a. It's a. Uh, what do you call that? They system they call of... them sap tests, basically. So it's like uh, the xylem, the cambium, the phloem, all this, all that stuff like that is 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 just their vascular system of of the plant itself. But so the vascular sap... would be the correct word to use. Yeah, that's what okay. I would. That's what I would use. I mean, I'm. That's what I was struggling for. Was somebody, like, somebody, somebody vascular? I think I know, that we have a vascular. I try system. to relate things as much to us as possible yeah. so that we can kind of understand it because we are all the same. The it's only difference between system. The only difference between their 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 chlorophyll and our blood is the molecule iron and nitrogen. You know what I mean? So they're we're these are our brothers, you know what I mean, really. We're all doing the same thing, have the same functions, have the same goals, just in a slightly different, you know, in a slightly different different thing. So and they protect us different. too, don't they? You know? Often. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, they're what? Protect us. They, yeah. They they, I mean without it. So it's like the sap tests, like they do these sap tests commercially, like you can test the sap flow and things at different points in the plant, and it will tell you the amount of nitrogen, there's nitrate nitrogen, ammonical nitrogen, different things like that, uh, and sugars and these other things. And plants that are overfed, especially like chemical fertilizers, or there's an abundance of nitrogen in the, in the system, they can't metabolize it quick enough, so they start storing stuff into their sap, which makes their sap really rich and really delectable to all kinds of sap-sucking insects. So you've got scale and aphids and mites and all those things start coming to that plant because it's, 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 over, it's overabundant in these, in these nitrogen and sugars that, that are in this but that, plant. But so, that's why, isn't that why cannabis farmers like pump the nitrogen at level, because they want that sap, but they want to find that balance, you know? So that's, yeah, I think that's where they go wrong. Honestly, I think that that's where you go wrong as, a, as, as any farmer, not just a cannabis farmer, is pumping it too hard because 
if you look at any natural system and the way that plants are eating normally, they're not fed large amounts in short periods like of time. Foie gras, geese it's 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 little but the goal perfect is ratios, it's like fattening right? up a calf or something. It is yeah. different. It is different. But then with fattening up the calf you comes other problems. Like can like certain chickens you they can't get up because their breasts are too big or like there's different things you'll you'll cost yourself by doing it in that in that regard. You know, um, like any of those flowers right there never had any type of fertilizer put on it. It was planted in, in the food forest floor. There was some compost initially put out, uh, and that's pretty much it. It got water uh, to the end. You know what I mean? You're and making, I'm and there's donkey teas? dicks and junk. You're I mean, making. You're not making teas. Not no, not really. Sometimes sometimes we'll do like a little bit of calcium, like a little calcium stuff. I make uh, WCA out of eggshells, which is like. Korean natural farming calcium. It's just plant available calcium with eggshells and vinegar. Yeah, what are, I was going to say, you put it in vinegar and yeah. vinegar. Yeah, for a couple of days, you, you, you cook up the, the eggshells and you brown them and then you mix it with vinegar at, at like a one to 10 ratio and then and it then, bubbles. And, and then it. what eventually, are, are you then sifting out solid material or you, yeah, you don't so, want to pour the vinegar yeah, out of so I take, I, I Yeah, you sift it out, you pour it into a little strainer or whatever. You keep the liquid, that's your, that's your calcium stuff. And then the the eggshells always just go into the compost pile or into the garden. Sorry, but the liquid is like mostly vinegar. It's pretty much vinegar, but right. it has extracted the calcium all out of and changed the molecule to make it a, in a plant available form. But but you dilute that. You a dilute ton, that a ton. one to a thousand. Okay, that yeah. that yeah yeah yeah. yeah. So like time. yeah okay. so yeah it's one to a thousand, and I even I even go a little bit less in some cases wow. just to be because I'm not measuring it's it like, perfectly. It's like a you know? squirt of vinegar exactly. in your but it's so powerful right that it's and it's and it's absolutely plant available like this so you can kind of you can fix those so do you do that like frequently Calumet. like i do that I, I do that usually like in the beginning when things are getting rolling and then right before i go into flower usually i'll give them a good good calcium you know and usually sometimes I'll, like they'll over be a couple with that. applications or one big like i usually make up one big like trash can of like seaweed and like calcium and maybe i'll throw a handful of worm castings from my worm bin you know what i mean just make this like you know gangster little extract you know what i mean literally it doesn't sit in there for more than you know a few minutes and then i take that and i i start using that into the garden and i usually do that like twice in the season i'll do it right sometime in the beginning of the year and then sometime right when i'm like in the start of bloom or right before bloom i have no parameter on exactly what week I'm going to do it because every year is different, especially on like the outdoor thing and every And are the eggs different. just like eggs that you've eaten over the past yeah. month or two? Yeah. 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 I eat organic eggs. I have, I have chickens. I, yeah. I, I always <laughs> uh, cook them up and then like crush them into the worm bin. And... Yeah. So yeah, once they pass through the worm bin, you can kind of get some benefit that way, but they're, they'll last for years just sitting in the soil or in those things unless can, they're getting can, processed. Can you somehow. over, cause I get so much leachate from my worms. Uh, can you overuse that? Yeah. Okay. I burnt the, <laughs> I burnt the shit out of my plants. I'll yeah. slow down. Uh, so with my leachate, <laughs> like with my leachate, I always like, I mean, I dilute it in I dilute it like one to a, one to 500 or one to a thousand. I really don't use a ton when I mix mine into something because i always err on the side i've been of a caution. little more aggressive <laughs> because i i yeah i know some people can be real and, and i've been aggressive but i've also had some negative reactions from being too aggressive and then using that too early in the worm bin cycle so if you just got a fresh worm bin right and you just made it like a month ago all that lychee that's coming out of there or whatever the liquid that comes out of there it's really hot and it's much more strong than usual so i so usually that's what i've been pouring in high doses on my plants be careful day, but they look great okay good well that's good so i mean that's not the end of the world i would i would get more out of it i'll by slow diluting down it. yeah yes. just dilute will, the crap i will out dial it back yeah. a little bit i mean and you shouldn't get like tons coming out you don't need to water it every day my worm bin i water like once a month maybe in the hot months, you know what I mean? And it stays well, in I, I would like miss the top yeah. a little bit, but now I don't. I, I yeah, mean, I don't. I, it's just as long as it's covered anymore. in the, sh it mine, if it mines in the shade yeah, and, it's, and, the it's, shade. and it's just, it's basically just this big wagon that sits on cinder blocks with a freaking boogie board or a what, piece of wood that of sits on top. Uh, red wigglers and Do other compost mix? worms. Well, yeah. that's what I was gonna. Right, I don't so know, like, I don't crawlers. know the other ones. I know there's no night crawlers, but I know that they're. Uh, Is that for a reason? Night crawlers usually. <laughs> I have those in my worm bin right now. So night crawlers usually don't. They're not compost worms. 
So they they're, do, they're, they're, they're not, they do a little bit. They're not as good at composting, I guess, is the thing. They they usually hang out in the soil system and those, they're better at tunnels. Because don't they come up at night to yeah. feed and then... Yeah, but like on like a breakdown, like feeding on like the this kitchen scraps and like on a rapid pace, they're just not, yeah. that's not their duty as much. They're more soil dwellers. They'll well, do it. Well, and they fortunately, do it. the black soldier fly also but, found the worm bin. So it's sure. like... That's, that's, it's like tons of black, and the the worms are annoyed. Yeah, <laughs> you can tell they're like because they're ever they're just yeah like they're just dominant. on yeah they're dominant. They start sometimes the ants will get in there and start attacking attacking worms. Sometimes you can sprinkle some diatomaceous earth in there, and that'll help knock off the ants or the top like bugs. war. It's war in. But there. what I use also is my old mosquito nets from the hoops that I make are used in my worm bin. So I make my worm bin. I line the bottom with a mosquito net. And then I put the stuff in, and then I either wrap the top with the rest of the mosquito net, or put another mosquito net over the top. So of it. how do you do it? And in then your they place? can't get in. No flies, no ants, no nothing. It's just they're completely sealed in that, and you're, it can breathe and everything. How many plants are you, at your place? Do you wrap? Is it like like netting for one or for a few, or for depending on how large? Depend. It depends. So like I do. Uh, like know. what's the most plants that are yeah. under one hoop? Well, legally, During six. Flower. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hypothetically, if you went to someone's I mean, <laughs> house, what would be the most... Um, how about your neighbor? Let's throw your neighbor under the bus. Well, my neighbor is actually annoying. <laughs> They've got like a 100-foot greenhouse. It's all lighted up and lit up at night. So like my backyard for the wow. last month has just been like lit up, which is... I'm like, oh, fuck. But You're I mean, I understand it's all, it's all like, good. Uh, it's all good. My house is big. It's okay. Uh -huh. um, but it, how, how late do they keep the lights on? I so? was out there last night. It was 11.30 at night, dude. Are you serious? I swear to God, wow. dude. I swear to God. So they're going for size. Dude, I don't know what they're going for, bro. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Never talked to them. Wow. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, like, you know, you I, in, like, the tall hoop right there, I've made them 12 by 12. Like, you know, a 12-foot long, you know, not 12 foot wide, but 12, yeah. 12 foot long by a little bit wider than that, you know, uh, probably 10 foot wide, okay. you know what I mean? And right. then you can do anything from like a whole bunch of little plants in pots, a whole bunch of little plants in the ground. Well, you, you can, can walk in there. A couple of big, you do walk yeah. in there, absolutely that's, you do. So the then you, you fold Let's it down. Let's go big so we can walk inside. Yeah, you get an extra flap, right? You get a little extra so you can fold the flap yeah. over and then you put a rock on it to keep How it. would you set one of these up and then add some supplemental lighting? Like You couldn't, well, you could, with with that well um, you don't you you you're pulling the supplemental lighting when you go into flower anyway so you don't need it you don't need it when you're flowering right so you wouldn't need to have like the you netting wouldn't, up you wouldn't need while to have you're doing it, it. Uh, unless you really wanted extra protection all the time from everything which net isn't bad all the time in the winter you can have nets all the time because they're not going to get as big right you can you know that they're going to stay pretty small and it's going to be more cold and stuff so you can get away with setting them up early but uh supplemental light then you get like a like a couple of like two by fours or a couple of pieces of wood, and you 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 stick some of that and like build <laughs> we a little. Need to do the sun on demand lights out here. You know, <laughs> you and you get a little LED. The whole neighborhood. You don't need a little, you don't need that little much. Little. <laughs> you can get like two little cheap LEDs. You could even probably get some solar like. That's those solar ones. Yeah, right cheese little, little things that would just light up a little bit, and that's you need a little bit you know close to them and on them to keep them. But in the winter, I really I don't ever do the supplemental. I just. I try to run them inside. Like if you have if you have a little space inside, I do. Then you plant a bunch of seeds in the winter. Starting now, this is when you know ever you know I start doing some of the winter looks and some of the looks at things. You plant seeds now. You grow them up inside until they're like, you know, a foot tall, maybe less, eight inches a foot tall. Right before they sex, you just take them outside and you put them and set them up in there, and then you can pull the sex. Or before you know you can you can clone them and sex them but i don't even do that i get them up to where they're about ready to start showing maturity like they can kind of you know like you should transplant them you know like fuck i should transplant this you're going outside you know what i mean so then they you you get your space back and you can take those outside and then you they go into flower and then you get another six inches they'll double in size sometimes because they're going to stretch you know a third to you know double depending on what you're growing and you get a you know getting a foot and a half tall plant with a couple of good branches go and then you don't have to have supplemental light other than like starting yeah. them inside i'll go from I mean? eight foot to a foot and a half yeah tom you're feet. you're gonna go from having a uh failed small home grow to having the the biggest operation of fire producing weed Dude. that yeah and the thing is you're get not get shipped to new you york don't spray anything like people like 90 
percent of the friggin' outdoor weed you're gonna smoke has got sp sprayed with something. To, you, you're spraying with something. I mean, bud worms are everywhere. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how a lot of these get away with. Not, and it's well, not, so how it's about the let, let, let's talk about like a hemp but, farm at scale and moths. Like yeah, what's going? What's go? What's going? Like you gotta spray them. Yeah, you don't. You either got so much to lose, and there's so not what, enough moths. So they spray, what are they spraying? A BT probably, BT probably. In I don't the flower? Know. Yeah, I, most people are like okay with to. it. Yeah, they're yeah. You have to. You don't have protection. You have to. But on on like scale on on like hectares and shit. I mean, I'm sure that like, I mean, you're you're gonna concede part of it. And you're you're gonna have too many plants for the population, right? But then you have lights. I think that there would be good light control, like those Dyna trap lights, those electric lights. You don't want them hanging like right next to your plants to where it's gonna like. Fiddle and with those your are the I don't think that they lights, would right? anyway. Yeah, I don't think they would anyway. But they, you start hanging them in the early spring as things are vegging, and you start killing all the population early, so there's less breeding going on. So by the time you go into summer and you're going in, you're going into flower, you've already kind of dented the local population in your zone on like not as much predicated breeding, you know, all this stuff going on. That now you've got less to deal with, and you can run it. Through the, through the cycles, like over there, and draw most of them to that instead of right here because they'll be drawn to that light. Towards really your neighbor's right? property. And then you can kind of, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then you can kind of light them up on that, on that regard too so you don't have to do as much spraying. And, and so, you, you so cover do you them think hemp growers up, you know? have like those lights like I bet you they, they I mean they, I've seen some that did yeah. that actually had little towers with some zapper lights on and, and things like I've seen some that did I don't know what a lot of them do do i mean here we don't have a lot of huge hemp farms that i can go to and see you know there's more you know other places you know this the east and you know colorado and places like that so i don't see as many of the hemp hemp farms but man i know that like a lot of people in Humboldt use the Dyna traps for like the big trees and you know a lot of different types of so light lamps and stuff like that. So I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you recommend mosquito netting for like la like large commercial grows? Do you? I mean, is it doable? So in so in in Pahrump, Las Vegas and Arizona, like during like cool season, you can kind of get away with little little open hoops like this it's not 100 and whatever you know what i mean and we've we've set up big you know i mean big big hoops like that with that and you just order big big rolls and yeah i mean it it works it doesn't last as as long as some things and it's easily torn so like you buy this big thing and you tear it in a hole in there it's like fuck you gotta like you know you gotta do some you know but yeah, for a cheap like way to like do it, and then as long as you're reusing it for something else, like I use it for my worm bins, or I use it for blueberry coverage, and once it gets tore somewhere else, I change it to some other type of function. You know what I mean? I try to use the shit out of it. Where do you get mosquito netting? In large swaths of it. You can get um, well Amazon. Home Depot. Amazon. You can is, at Home Depot, what? which is crazy. Yeah, you, you can't. You cannot get it at Home Depot. Why not? You might be able to order it on a Home Depot online store and like order it somewhere and they might be able to sell it, but I've never, you can't go someplace and actually buy it. Uh, a fabric they store. They don't stock it. Yeah, like like Joanne Fabric Stores, like this is what we have around here. Right, they, fabric stores. They yeah. have it sometimes. Gotcha. But sometimes the amount that I need or and that what are they, are they calling it a mosquito They're letter, charged too like, much at those stores. Yeah, probably. and yeah. they don't have that on hand. You know? Right. But I found that on Amazon, you can order it on Amazon, you can order it. Uh, from fabric fabric so stores like Joanne Fabric. Shouldn't shouldn't hydro stores and those grow shops have it because that's Dude. where I go to get the net. Yeah, I mean if they I, were smart. I, uh -huh. Yeah, you know honestly, like it's really weird. Like I so the reason why I use the netting in the first place is I'm a fruit tree guy, right? I, I'm constantly. I had these, we've I've constantly seen these produced over here, right there. I had. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean we're constantly yeah. putting stuff over like crops to protect them. Frost blankets. Uh, like blueberries are a big thing where I use those for blueberry bushes. They're That's small and we can say. build a little PVC thing. Blueberries, bird control, like nobody's business. It's great. So basically the uh, birds are swarming above. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I like peaches and like you got, you got, you got, up. you got June beetles attacking the figs and the soft flesh fruits, the peaches and the nectarines and those big old green, you know, June bug beetles floating around the Japanese beetles or whatever. Uh, there's all kinds. So we've always used stuff like this just to cover fruit trees and stuff. So like years ago, like I mean, I planted the greatest crop I've ever seen. I was so proud. It was like, I don't know, it was like almost 10 years ago or whatever. And, and basically, I didn't get any of it. It all was budwormed to death. 
And, and this I is spent, at a point where you would have done it if it was a blueberry tree. If I wouldn't, I didn't even think that I was like, yeah, I'll spray it with BT, or I like didn't think about the, I didn't have that problem. I never planted such a big crop the way that I did outdoors, and that was the first time that I really got kicked in the stomach, and I was like, everybody has to go through that. You right. got, you got to be like, fuck. Yeah, so and then I'm like, I'm gonna pull out the mosquito netting, I and I've never looked back ever. Every year, you pull in, you're pulling the the freaking donkeys you that you have, you know? Are you like, sold? On <laughs> No, 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 it's all good, yeah. but I'm just trying to, like, to understand kind of the time frame. It's, like, kind of trying to go back in time with the, the negative tests. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what happened, tracing your stuff. When I let you know that we have a problem, we, it was probably too late. Uh, I we, even we, told we, him we with the first the text, I go, before. oh, I have a we, problem, we, we and I found, think the entire thing is gone. We found a caterpiller and took it off when I was last year. And I bet you you were, what, like, week three in flower, right? It was, yeah, it was like the, maybe, yeah. maybe, so that's my question to yeah. you. It's like, yeah. we're already two or three weeks too late? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, so like I said before, like they're not really going after the really small flower and plants, right? They wait for them to get a little bit more robust because the, the stench is a little bit more. There's more for their offspring to, to consume. There's a place for them to hide. I don't know the exact reason of why, but usually about week as soon as you start getting some substantial little pom-poms on there well, you know what i mean like week this. three the second you can smell it you yeah like... that's when it's that's when that's when they're already ahead of you that's you know right. what i mean so <laughs> you got a week they you got a week or two ahead of, of that okay. you know so like right. i usually like june like late june into like the first week of july maybe you know this year i was a little bit later when do you, you know I mean? when do you plant I plant from inside and everything comes outside when it's time, like in, in late May, early June, the things come out. But by the end of June and like the first two weeks of July, where we are, like we already have only like 15 hours of sun, like max in the summer, you know what I mean? Like some of my stuff will trigger earlier than that. Like it's really light sensitive and trigger. So I have to cover my stuff a little bit earlier than some, you know, where I grew a bunch of stuff from my buddy this year and all of this stuff, like it's, it's like still going because it, you know, it's so late, you know, compared to my stuff, you know? So, um, it's, it just depends on what you're growing, but you want to get it like a week or two before you go into flower, right? right when you're t usually right when I'm taking clones, for the for the select stuff that I want to look at, the ones that have the best stem rub, the best ones, or my mother plants that I keep every year anyway. You know what I mean? As soon as they grow up, I always put those outside in the ground so they can tap into the earth and regenerate. Yeah, I, I take clones, the, I cover yes, them. I the like mothers, these in yeah. The corner. Okay. What are the purple and, and, ones? What are those gardenia or whatever? What are those what? in the corner? Back there, a bougainvillea. The bougainvillea. Yeah. So don't those attract? Um, aren't those? Don't those? So also they have a bougainvillea looper. It's a different worm. Oh, okay. It's a different it worm. It's interesting that a, another worm will okay. have no interest. No in interest. It. Yeah, it's a different thing. And like, so it's, it's attracting like the corn, different it's like, butterflies. I believe, too? yeah, I think okay. you guys are right. Like, it is the corn worm, or it's an earworm. It's a worm yeah, that wants to be worm. inside of a right. bud. It's an actual bud worm. They'll get into flowers <laughs> or corn, things that I mean, are that's really where like, I would love like to roses, hang out. like like different it's types not of a bad things spot like that. Like, to hang out. like tight budded areas. That's where they they snuggle right up in there. It's medicinal for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, yeah, it's, the, you're those like are berry cozy worms. and all your food is right there in your face. Most of, most like worm worms like chew that. on the leaves and are on the outside of the plant. For you know? <laughs> now, I remember the one where its head was buried in the bud and its oh, whole yeah. body was out. Oh, yeah. We yeah. Yeah. disturbed it. Yep. No, I know all about those, brother. I've been through that. I've, yeah. been, I've sent through my, my dad, um, you know, bummer for, for them, but him, him and his little, <laughs> little covenant of group of people that he so, lives with over there, they got decimated so, this year with worms. This year. They, okay. And they put up the net too late. And I was telling him, like, you guys put up the frigging nets. Please put and up the nets. down in San Diego? They're, so, in, they're in Ocean Beach, yeah. And I was like, was put up the nets, put up the nets. And they put them up too late. And I was like... It, like once it's too late, it's too late. And, yeah, it's too late. And when it went bad, it was so fast. Yeah, it's because like, it's been it, happening for that, two weeks that, before. Exactly. Yeah. So that weekend yeah. when we found that that one caterpillar. Yeah, there was already was, thirty of them on no, there. No, I know, but yeah. it was so beautiful. The plants, the, like they were, they, they had, were looking good. Mm -hmm. They were looking really good. There was and a lot of were, happiness. There was so much sap. Mm -hmm. So you know, they were. I was like. And they thought that too, though. You know, that's what they're looking for. They're so looking the for cannabis gods really fuck with your head Dude. because they make it. Like it's already ruined. You know, the way that ruined, I, yeah. but you don't know it. You don't know it. Mm. Yeah, the way that I notice it, like n nine times out of ten, the way that I'll notice it before anything, if you don't see the droppings and right. it's early, right. one of the little leaflets that's coming out of the bud will be brown. 
one little leaflet or one little area right there will just be slightly discolored and it's not even something that's like whoa that's messed up it's like it's just slightly now, different here's another thing. you know what it's i mean like, and then you open that up and then it's completely rotten so behind I'm, there I'm going, is that a red on the hair track. is it is our new our new expressions coming in because sometimes they'll look because they look yeah and sometimes that's just like maybe the trichomes have gone amber on exactly. there. Maybe it's something, you know, maybe it just got hot. It was really hot. Maybe this leaf just got burnt a little bit. Right, exactly. or, but no, as soon as you touch that leaf, that thing will pull right out of there. And then you'll see you can your, that bud will just disintegrate in your hand. Like a perfect looking bud will just like disintegrate. And yeah, you'll look inside and it'll be all inside. poop on the inside. That's what we did. All, I mean, one of the first like, ones I oh, pulled out. Oh, it's too late. And, and, you're, and you're too late. You really are. I mean, you can spray at that point and save what you can but you're already sprayed that sucks I mean it is what it is we've all smoked that for years I mean I'm not you know I'm not it is I'm, you know I'm not better than some kind of bud that's been sprayed every once in a while but if I have the choice it's gonna be as clean as friggin that's right you know yeah you know as it can be so wow you know the key is but keep it off thing. of but, the plant don't let the, the mosquito thing. netting touch yeah. the plants give yourself some room always make it a little bigger than your plants and yeah. know that your plants are going to stretch so don't build it to like your plant size and right, right near the flower and then they're yeah. going to stretch right into the son of a bitch. Exactly. Always give It's like how I buy clothes it for Gemma. So yeah. when you say <laughs> a, little, a little big, a little bigger. you want a couple of feet, yeah, if you, a couple yeah. of feet yeah. for sure, yeah. Always get a little more Absolutely. than you should. And if you have a little extra on the ground that you got to throw a couple rocks on, I always put soil on mine so it really stays nice, you know, or whatever, but, or mulch or whatever, you know, on the, you know, but you want, you want some extra lay on the ground to keep rodents out. Because not only is it going to keep budworms up, but you're going to keep squirrels, you're going to keep rats, you're going to keep rabbits, you're going to keep all kinds of stuff so on the ground traffic from coming in and chewing on your stems or causing mm, a ruckus. That's and, good too. and on a small scale, this is the way to do. Like right. that's like you got six plants, you right. can friggin' protect the shit out of those six right. plants. Like, Absolutely, like awesome, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like Re no problem. Resin right? stud is the note that goes along with this, that's right? Yeah. So that <laughs> one, you're that making one, hash. I, okay. That one, no, that one, that one's dad. The dad of that was a resin stud. Oh, got it, got it, so got it. So that was a plant. His daddy was came out of a out of a big sort, a big population. I went through a bunch of plants with me and my a couple of my buddies, and we pulled out this male that had visible resin dripping all over him and had awesome stank and stickiness to him. And then that male hit a bunch of my stuff, and that's the that's that's just one of the things. That's the or I think that's the what the orchard lady. That was the yeah. bacon grease. Oh, the bacon grease. Yeah. Oh, so that, So there's yeah. So you've got two resin studs going there. So bacon um, grease, wicked witch. And so sorry, bacon grease is Pam one crossed with dosido. So that's v, that's version two. Sorry, V two. Yeah. Yeah. So. Do we have the V one? Like uh, everything that I do, <laughs> oh. goes through Pam. Every mail that I collect and, and find goes to Pam first. Pam one first. A female? I, yeah, my female. My Pam 1 lady. Every male that I find always breeds with Pam 1 in addition to everybody else. Is that else. your stable? That's your stable? Yeah. So every that, male yeah. that's coming from outside, that's not a Pam. That's not Every male that I select, yeah, that's not a Pam. That's anything that I need to learn about. I breed to Pam 1 because Pam 1, doing that. Because I know Pam so yeah, well. Yeah, it will tell me everything <laughs> that that male does, right? They'll tell me, oh, he, he passes structure or he passes this this smell or he he gives frost or he changes the bud structure or whatever because he'll tell me right away what the hell what the hell he does because i've grown so many different types of pam and gotcha. so many different how did that variables happen? why why were you drawn to that well pam is an old bag seed from like pam late anderson 90s. yeah it's like she's like old bag seed <laughs> from the late 90s um early 2000s kind of old school funky sativa stuff um that I just had collected and, and when I grew Pam's mother from that original seed, she was really special Jeez. and she was awesome and she was heavy producing and I was like, man, I want to keep this plant around for a little while. So I kept it around for a little while and then I had and it did tested. did it matter what environment you were in or did she just she's do well? tough. She's tough. She's colorful. Right. She's pretty. Right. She's heavy. That's why you she's like early. her too. Like, so. She's, yeah. And she, I mean, she does everything that I need her to do. And it's then the same there. story with this other breeder who uses this black in yeah. everything. As Everybody his, has like this one thing that, you know, if, you're, purple, if you've got something yeah. that's, that you know, that right. you use, that... That, All right, that but, teaches but, you, you but, know. But, but the way you're describing it right now is that you use it because you know it so well, so it teaches you what the other thing yes. is doing. Yes. But then do you then eventually cross the other thing with something that's not Pam? Or yes. Do you always, always. Okay. 
Oh, right. yeah, that's they have the test with Pam first. So you're not like fixated on Pam for smoking no. and growing. And no, you're, she's, you're, she's you're, a, you're using you love it, but you're yes. also using it so it can tell she's you about my, other she's things. She's my bar that I can. Yeah, I can tell because okay. she, she's so strong. Like when you're she, calibrated to her as your zero. everything that she usually touches. She dominates like in the genetic pool. Right. She's like a it. dominator. I'm, like, I'm already literally attracted. like literally dominated. <laughs> like she'll turn everything like like to her morphological character. She really dominates over fruit. I mean, she'll really take Take over. So if you find something that dominates her, that's you, something that I like. I want. I've been, I want I've been something told that's, that I that I have nice. dominant you genes. You are totally into dominance. <laughs> no, because my daughters tells look me how exactly like me. And sometimes you don't want something that dominates her, right? You want a male that, like, if you want, so say, I want to cross this male with something that's not Pam, that is perfect. Like, say, say dog walker, and I want to make dog walker exactly right. So I'll cross this male, and if this male doesn't really do anything, and Pam completely dominates this male, and it's pretty much that, then maybe I'll use that male in that dog walker because maybe the dog walker will dominate it too, right. and I'll get what I want quicker. You right. know what I mean? To look right. at, you to, know to, what I mean? To, to mediate. So it kind of just yeah. depends on what you what you want. I just want to find out what the male does, and then I can use him accordingly if I want to use him. You know so, what I mean? so talk so, about something recent where you uh, so bacon grease. That that's v. This nobody has this. Okay, okay, one other person, a guy that lives in Jamaica, my boy, uh, Rasta Bob, he's the only other person that has that version. That is V2. Uh, the V1, the real bacon grease, is my <laughs> you, Pam 15. Do you 15. have confidence of it doing well? <laughs> I wanted you to get something that was nervous? good that was different. I don't know. It's don't not nervous. Be nervous. But I want you to have fun. No, and that's where you're those have seeds fun. are in good hands. I'm um, not worried about it. You have fun. <laughs> I got plans. Um, so the but, stakes are high. But Listen, it's just something that's just happens. different that you can, yeah. like, you know, that he could be but, like, okay, oh, so, well, I got so, this. But in, in, is, so in the breeding of this, the Pam was the so the was one the I wanted, female. the bacon grease that I wanted to create and call bacon grease was with my Pam 15 yeah. and that same dad. But that was the byproduct of the project. The dad was the dosi dough. Yes, that's okay. the resin dad. Because I went through a bunch of plants and found a resin dad, dosi dough, and I wanted to know, you know, what he did. So, but I wanted to breed him with my Pam 15 because my Pam 15 is this crazy tall haze thing that's just a resin dripper. And I wanted to give it a resin mail to this other resin thing. But in doing that project, I had to hit it to the PAM-1 in order to figure out kind of what she did. And I grew a bunch of those out. And it's awesome. It's awesome as hell, too. It's, like, hard to tell the difference. But that's just a different mom than my traditional one. So it's version 2 and then version 1's with the 15. But then once you know what the do do male does, would you then cross it with, stuff. for example, a cherry gasm, yes. which you also now know what – and for yeah. both of these, you know what the males do. Yeah. And you can just apply yeah. what would if, happen yeah, with the females as well. If he does something well. that I want to do, yeah, I can apply it to whatever female that I want. Yeah. Of something that's not, not a ham in our yes. in our yeah, like triangle kush, got it, got it, a got gator it. bait, a all right, so so Flamingo so Ringo, yeah. So from this project, you'll now breed so, the dosi dough with like one of these other. So that dosi dough fathered a couple things that I'm that that are going into testing at the oh, end sorry, of this year. So, and what did the do, what did Pam tell you about the dosi dough male? So that dosi dough male has a more upright cush structure with more of my cushy leaves, which is what I wanted, which right now they're all in flower. They're still fruit fruit dominant, but it has sparkle. It added resin and it added a little bit of the of a shorter stature with more of like the branches are more upright instead of Christmas tree. You know, it has this more I call it the cush a Kush stature and it has this more more of a and that's the OG Kush um, version do dosi dough. It's the dosi dough 18 because it was greasy as hell. Um, I I I was pushing it up against the um, mosquito netting. You know what I mean? Moving some stuff around and it's it left such a nasty smear on the side when i when i pulled it aside and it was just greasy as fuck i'm like man that's greasy that's like that's some greasy that's some greasy you know and like i was thinking about it i'm like oh that's bacon grease man that's what it is and old bacon grease is all white in the pan just like just greasy and you know once you get it on there you're never getting it off it pretty much you know it is what it is so i just call it bacon grease doesn't smell like bacon grease or anything it's very floral very spicy very i call it i call it smoke shop like you walk into a smoke shop and there's like incense and funky things smelling and kind of this musty dude with bo and just this weird collection <laughs> a of, cacophony of, yeah, of a smells. Weird, yeah a weird smoke shop kind of smell um very 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 good uh 
So, okay, but so as a contrast, this is the Orchard Lady, which is also a Pam 1 cross with Citrus Farmer that's resin a different stud. Resin stud yeah. So what did the Pam 1 tell you about the Citrus so Farmer? So Pam 1 dominates that cross. Okay. Okay, so, so that, that's a submissive male. The, yeah, he's more sub <laughs> he added frost like a mofo though. Okay. So in the cactus fruit, like there's a there's cactus fruit or cactus chem. Some people call it cactus chem. A bunch of veteran groups grow it, a couple of people around town grow it. Um, there's several people that have found keepers in the cactus cam and it's just, it looks kind of like the Mac with the resin. Uh, it really has got this grapefruit, citrus sharpness with this Mac kind of resin, you know, profile. Uh, but to the orchard lady, it, it doesn't have that. I haven't found any of those Mac resin characteristics. You've got the Pam characteristics in there, which is purples and pinks and swirls of color and it's got uh more of a sandy resin type like like pam um and she's this really grapey um most of the phenotypes are very great bubble gum and f sugary and colorful they're really cool and the branches are really stout like you don't need caging and stuff for most of the orchard unless you're gonna let it get 10 or 12 feet which they will and and there's several people that grew 10 foot Orchard ladies this year, which is killer. Um, but they are really firm, fibrous branches, man, and it's full on like candelabra. Do you manipulate strength. them? Do you bend? You can, but you should do it early with the orchard lady because they firm up pretty. But do you? Do you? No, I don't do yeah. lots of manipulation. Do you let your plants no. just do what they're gonna do? Yeah, unless they're like coming into contact with danger. Like if they're, if they're in a smaller space and I need to manipulate them to keep them out of trouble. Then I will do so. But if so I like don't have Valentina to, then I won't. was jumping because up and down me. on the couch yet last night. Yeah. <laughs> Outside yeah. over the concrete, and I was like, "Let me." <laughs> so do you top? Your, so you top? I do a top right in the beginning, yeah. um, and then usually that's when you about say it. the beginning. So like when they get like three or four leaf sets. As soon as I get like six inches or so, you know, they got a couple of good leaf sets. I'll top it then, so you have a nice low branching, not too low because I don't want it branching on the ground. So, you know, I usually, you know, you know, six inches, seven inches, I'll do a top right there. And then I don't do another one. And most of the strains that I grow are really branchy strains anyway. So just that one top just sends it on its way to a, a really nice And the structure. height is whatever it's going to be. Whatever you want it to be. Like the Pam and like the Dog Beach. So once beach, it gets, say, to eight and you, don't, you go, I don't want any, what, how do you keep it from growing? Bend that sucker down. Just bend you it. Prune it or bend it. So I'm, not a, I'm a fan of both. So, but, so like if you prune it, aren't you like, creating a potential opening for something to get like if you do it if, bend, if you it? do it if you're pruning it i would say prune early don't prune late because the later you prune the less activity is happening with your plant the less it's feeding itself the less it's doing the more it's foot heal you know the less it's going to be able to take care of that wound and it's got too much other well, things once going you're on. six seven eight feet that's too late you got to bend you got to bend it at okay. that point you know and you can bend it and right. you know flop it or whatever no problem man right. or weave it you know um i've put in i've put in trellis nets way too late and fully made it work you know what i mean gotcha. you, you know even if you you know it's not and they like a little bit of stress yeah right? but they, yeah a little bit. i mean yeah. <laughs> a little bit a little i mean the best obvious. honestly the best the best <laughs> plants i think you know just like the best best people in this world man they didn't come from like perfect situations right you we know, all came from torment and I'm struggle in some way or not i don't say struggle your plants but like in some way you have to work for what you have right you know but you gotta I'm fight for you, something like if you're like listening talking to people reading if you don't have your hands-on experience People's beliefs, you know, like about uh, philosophies about that are all over the map, yeah. you know, in terms of. And so, you know, at the end of the day, you kind of find, have to find your own way. Yeah, I think you have to. Yeah, because you can't listen to everyone. No, man. Is the rice just and a desiccant? What's for me going to work for you all the time. You know? What is the rice? Yeah, just yeah, a, yeah. yeah. That's my cheap little one. Usually there's cotton or something or I usually use cotton or rice in there. So it works for like some KNFE microbes on the rice. <laughs> it's clean, good organic Some, rice. Uh, you know? <laughs> mycelium. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I throw a bunch of that random stuff or random seeds. I use cheese so, seeds. So, which one would you and... recommend out here next? Because I think basically with all, we should just chop all, like, everything salvage down. Yeah, salvage they're, they're whatever not, you yeah, can. Yeah, you're, 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 yeah, you're, you're, you're hurting. Um, <laughs> yeah. You don't want to, like, ingest anything that's actually, a, you know, 
and has molded or got a bunch of the stuff on there. If you got a clean spot or a clean bud that's not touched, I think there are like just a couple. Then <laughs> go for it. But really, you're going to have a meager situation. The best thing to do is use that because it's a bioaccumulator. So all that good soil and all that good stuff that you put fed, fed into it, right? It's at least inside of it, right? Sure. So you can chop that up and use it as mulch or throw it someplace or you know compost it or Tom, we should we should whatever. we should go to home depot and get like a a home uh like composter no what you need to do those don't work um what you got to do like those little like twirly mulcher. things the thing with compost man is you got to have like a th you got to have at least a three by three three foot wide three foot tall pile like mass right in order to generate enough heat to start cooking the stuff to to really do it, break it down and sterilize all that good stuff but if you only build it three foot tall and three foot wide, then after like the first day or two, it runs out of steam and stops cooking. And then you get a half ass pile that never finishes and just kind of sits there. It's, and that's where everybody gives up, you know, in their, in their compost pile. So if you build it five foot tall and, you know, three foot or five foot tall, what, what I do is I got three pallets or six pallets from Home Depot, right? And I put one pallet on its side, one pallet in the back and one pallet on the side and create a little cubby. And then I make an, an identical one on, the, on this side, right? And then you pile your stuff to the top of that, you know, pallet. It's like four or four and a half feet or whatever. And With the, one side open, the front side open. Yeah, with the front side open. So you can kind of shovel stuff in there or whatever. And you just pile it up as best you can. As it, you go green or it, you go brown, brown and dead, green and wet, brown and dead, green and wet. So it's like brown stuff, wood and brown dead leaves, brown dead stuff and then like green is like green leaves or grass clippings or chicken manure st stuff or whatever you're using that's green and wet and you know and you do brown and brown and green and brown and green you soak all that down as you're building the pile and as long as you get it five foot tall and you know that pallet size wide it'll start cooking and that thing will start friggin just over the next two days or so will just heat up to like 160 180 140 somewhere in there depending on your time of year and it'll just start cooking that stuff and then you after two or three days then you take your your fork and you friggin rotate it over into the next bin that you made and that's the sucky thing about compost is because the only way to actually do it to where you're not getting anaerobic crap and like stuff that you can jam your hand in and like smear on your face because it smells like good earth and is beautiful the only way to do it is to do it the right way those tumblers they don't have enough mass and you have to like add stuff and they're always this sludge that like you never um, want to do although it. Although I have those tumblers and they're yeah. actually pretty awesome. Yeah. I, I, I do you have huge have it, ones. Do you have huge ones? Yeah, you yeah. get enough mass. And if you I add the each, compost I starter. I think each drum is 55 gallons and it's a dual If you get chamber. them the big, yeah. If you just have the small the small area, it never heats yeah, yeah, up. Yeah. And I've been to no, thousands. No, mine gets so hot. That's why I love it. Yeah, I've been to thousands of places and like they have these things and they just they just never break down. It's just this nasty sludge where you don't want to like stick your hand in it. And if you don't want to stick your hand in it, then it ain't Actually, compost, Tom, I'll, you know I'll, what I mean? I'll bring, you know? it's good, um, I'll, I'll bring some uh, next time. That's like my judge. If, it, if you don't want to uh, like jam your awesome. hand in it, no, and I like, do. you know, then, then you're not doing it right. So I put um, it in all that's my the bomb. pots. That's the bomb. But nine times out of 10, you need that mass. And if you do it like that, it cooks really quick. You can do it in a matter of well, a few what, weeks. What, what I thought we were talking about was just like cutting it and just laying it on there. But yeah, you're you talking can do about that too. compost. No, that, you can do that too. But then it wouldn't thermophilically. Well, if you if you turned it into the soil, you have to color it. You have okay. to, it's not going to thermophilic in anything, no matter what, if you just cut it and lay it down. Right. It's just going to oxidize or break down. If you just leave it on the surface, then the sun will but be down and you'll lose so, a lot of your you're nutrition. You're saying that's okay, even though you just got hammered with... You, it's okay no matter yeah. what because you're not you know you don't got nothing else you're you're, you're not trying <laughs> not to save anything. On anything new right yeah you don't have anything left and you know those worms are just protein and vitamins and minerals and water anyway so compost the shit out of them or bury them and throw them in the soil or yeah chop it now, up i'd, I'd and, be psyched to keep them here because i was gonna you know, potentially bring them throw them in my composter at home but. yeah for sure dude and then like i said you got all that good stuff that was in that soil i'm sure you guys use awesome stuff right and i mean they, they just loaded themselves up with at least well and, some and i i would want to keep i'd want to keep the root systems there just plant right next to them yeah you could so yeah. cut it at yep. the base yep yep, yep. um and you just read yeah redo the and then deal. we can all right so sh we'll and then do like, the bacon grease is that what we or what? yeah i say bacon grease orchard lady i mean hubble I mean, they're all kind of, they're all different. They're all different what's in their own way. And, what's nice and... Uh... Like a fruity, easy plant would be Orchard Lady probably. Um, a really kind of a, a tasty, sweet, fruity, easy. 
that you know orchard lady a more um like the hubble and the wicked witch will have a tiny bit of cbd on board so you'll have some this is your brand yeah yes sir family family tree, tree seeds, seeds. Yeah. awesome yeah so you'll have like um you'll have a little bit of cbd in that <laughs> wicked witch that's Thanks, cool Thanks, Tom. There'll be that, that CBD, the Tom's 3D our, CBD our is a skunk haze, Afghan, <laughs> and then the uh, Hubble's the Flamingo Ringo. So you'll get some pinks, uh, pink pistol action in oh. that Hubble, plus that Hubble's dog walker. So it's gas with a little bit of this pink CBD characteristic. So you've got, you know, it dominates on the TAC, so it gets you wasted, man. And so, actually, it has long carry because you have a little bit of CBD in there. Wh you actually which one will, is that? That's Hubble. Hubble's the one that people fall in love with all the time. It's uh, one of the, what I, I love Hubble, man. I All think right. that's a killer one. So they are the, they're the most, they're like the honorary ones, like to get going. Like they're the ones that are like slower growth at the beginning. You know what I mean? But they're superior. You get a good, if you get phenotype number one, I call it pheno one of uh, the Hubble. That's a good dog walker. That's what we have. With some oh my God, it's the F1. Well, yeah, but no, you got to. You got to grow them in the phenotypes that'll come out of that F1. You'll have a couple different ones. You'll have a CBD dominant one. Yeah. that will have CBD and like pink, neon pink hairs. Wow. And it'll be mostly CBD dominant, you know, or one to one, <laughs> you know, a one to one. And it'll have this funky papaya grandma's perfume smell to it. And then like phenotype one is dog walker dominant, which is the gas and like the chem resin and you get color sometimes you'll get pink in there too but you'll get this extra color but that's the grease the gas with a little bit of you know the the pink and a teeny bit of cbd is in there and that's my favorite one to find it's like dog walker with a smidge of cbd and some some color and it's like it's, a, it's an excellent friggin plant man excellent plant um, and then there's, well, should we, it goes should we cut these right now let me, yeah, that's, let's I thought it. that was a part of what we were doing. Yeah, let's we do can it. just get it done. Um, do, you, do you have clippers? So, yeah, though, so nice. you yeah like, I'll go get you a fun clipper. You like everything. You like gases, exotics, and OGs. What is your personal, like, what do you... My uh, favorite's gas, man. Yeah, that's uh, what like, it sounds like, because your voice, go, you, you get a little excited. I like gas, <laughs> man. Like, that's the one thing, like, the cool thing about Pam is she's not gas. Like, she is, she's got tons of sentimental. She's really rare. She... Like Phylos is garbage, but she tested like kind of unique in the in the scale of things in their galaxy. So that's why I've kept her for so long and oh, worked with Phylos. her, which is funny. But who knows Phylos what's real and what's not? So I don't have any like like definitive information on what she is or where she came from. And the information that I did get was like there's not there's not a lot. She's rare, you know. So I was like, okay, so well, I'm that's work good with to this. know yeah. because they yeah yeah. So I'm good with I'm good with that. So I've kept her and she's. She's tough. She's resilient. She's huge. She's resonant. She's pretty. She just doesn't but, have gas. But that's interesting like, that she's so something that you're not, that's not like So, her. So what my whole goal in life is, is like, I need to put gas into Pam. But, <laughs> but well, Pam dominates everything, uh, especially got it, got it, got gas, it, got it. which is like my life's like, holy, well, this is, it's it, like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, someone like they're parents and family know they have a certain type and then like the woman they marry is completely off type that's like you and pam <laughs> totally. but, but yeah, no, now you have a but mission your mission you're trying exactly. to turn pam into exactly. your type exactly so like she is my type you're I trying really, to force pam to be something i enjoy she the shit be. out of her but like when she'll appreciate it once uh, but if i'm <laughs> sit, if i had it. a choice and i could get like i really so want way, great i want i want to bring i want to bring i want to try to get pam, the actual pam anderson on god when i we love talk that, about this that cool? and, and have you be like i named <laughs> yeah, a cannabis my, yeah. cultivar my, i sent her a message i sent her a message on email or like instagram or something like years ago when i when i was you know, Did when you I decided I was going like, to name her the okay Pam, with me doing and I'm this? like, I'm going to name this after you, this this flower. If you got a problem with it, let me know. But this is going to happen, so you know, yada yada. But like, you know, obviously she's not going to write back to me. But um, you know, she can't if see she me likes really weed, now. I, if, I, if I were, I'd be like, you got to at least but, give me. There are yeah. many roads to Pam. Yeah, we, that's I why I call it Pam One too, and like that's why most of the time I call it Pam One because. It keeps me out of legal trouble in case she's like pissed off that I'm saying Pam Anderson all the time. You know what I mean? So yes, you know it, it is what you it could is. You could be like Pam's you know, a common is, name. But she was the most gorgeous thing when she stands out in the orchard. I mean, among other plants, you are like, what the fuck plant you is that? You do the you know, you know, know the I mean? meme. She's you know, got this yeah, thing about her that's you something know the special. Me, the you know? meme with the guy with the girlfriend who's looking back at the other girl. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's now, it. Do you Pam's grow the other a Tommy girl. Lee? No, I, I had a uh, Hoff. You grow a I had, I, had a, I had a male that I called the Hoff. 
Oh, you know what really? I mean? For Hasselhoff, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> but he turned out to really pass really strong <laughs> citrus terps. Be super and cheesy. I hate citrus terps. Like, I hate the citrus. Like, the citrus farmer mail that I got, I pulled out the grape one. I didn't want the citrus one. I, I pulled out this this grape cough syrup thing. You know what I mean? I pulled out this weird, you know, random one from the GDP You're side. Very I particular. Think. Uh, but the citrus <laughs> terps, he passed tons, everything it touched, he turned it to friggin' orange, like bright orange. And like, some people like that. I, I can't, I don't, I don't, I can't smoke the, I can't smoke orange weed, man. Huh. I just have, it doesn't do anything for me. It's mm. like, yeah, I don't really like it either. But if anybody's got an orange weed so that's and they want to share with me and what, think it'll uh, like it, let me know. What but I've never what, found one yet. Well, what's, <laughs> what terpene would yeah. that be dominant in? Uh, I don't. I don't know what orange tangerine, like that, that terpene is. I mean, limonene is, you know, lemony. I mean, they got that terpene in there. And it's not lemon, it's more orange. I don't know. There is know. a name for that terp. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's on the know. tip of my tongue. but uh, Yeah, I, I don't know what the up. citrus, citrus one is. Yeah. I mean. it's. I think it um, starts with an O, actually. Ozamine? It could be. It could be ozamine, yeah. I get some water for I this could, dog. I could go. Oh, Tom, by the way, if you're getting more uh, bubbly water, I would Yeah, I have one in here. <laughs> but yeah, like you can notice, like all the stuff that I cross Pam with a lot of the time is like dog walker. Uh, there's a triangle cushion, Chem 91. There's By a, the way, I just ordered one OG of these. OG Sour. A, uh, I, I ordered the Amazon knockoff of the Camco uh, carbon water hose filter. Oh, sweet. No, that's why I, I use those, bro. You do? Yeah, 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 for sure. I was like, I think I'd be happy having that. Because I, I, what I always have to do every day is I fill everything up that I'm going to use the next day because I want to let the water sit for 24 hours. No, that's hours. great, dude. I do use those all the time. There's a there's 50 different manufacturers of the thing. There's 10 different people that make them. You know, you it can buy it them. clearly sells because <laughs> Amazon has the Amazon branded one. And Dude, I'm sure they only do they that work with, right. yeah, the only stuff that like they Like my mic stands. I have <laughs> not, every hose I, 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 I have uh, <laughs> light stands. They're Amazon Basics lights. And it's interesting to think that they just see what sells and they're like, let's make that, <laughs> let's make that. It's cheating, man. That's the way to do it, though, I guess. But it's no, like, that's, that's it's like they're I, a I spider that lures brands in to fuck themselves. I know. They're like, know. we're going to eventually sell what you I hate saying buy that on Amazon, you know, but... I seriously went to camping stores, I went to fabric stores, I That's went to so every weird. box store, I went to every lumber store. Nobody friggin' carries like a roll of that stuff. And if anybody knows of a place, let me know. But I've I've went through hell over the last year. So I just find it on Amazon. Because like you can find fabric. shade cloth and stuff at uh, yeah. some of these Home stores, but not, and stuff. but not mosquito on any. That's weird. So weird, dude. It's so weird. I bet you in Florida it's different. They probably have mosquito netting more places there because they got mosquitoes. You know, more prevalently. Yeah, in didn't you like say you? I know, you know? It, it was Pedro this morning who said he has mosquitoes down in Orange County, and I was like, really? Because I never see mosquitoes. We got I tons rarely... of them in my house, man. Really? I got tons of them. Yeah, they're 30 feet from their water source. So if you got water standing somewhere, there's mosquitoes. But there do you notice that in LA there aren't really? Yeah, there's not a lot of life in LA. Mosquitoes need plants and soil. Right. And no, but stuff. I mean it's like, amazing because I, I come yeah. from the East Coast where like every yeah, every, summer, you, you every summer you're just like oh, <laughs> my like wife's scratching from, my wife's from Rochester, New York. Yeah, I know about that. Yeah, it's like, it's like I couldn't believe that, man. I'm like you guys live like this. No, it's not as bad here. There's not as many, but at my house, man. I mean, I got tons of mosquitoes. If I, especially if I let drains and stuff fill up. You know, I use it, it's interesting when it rains here and just the life that explodes like yeah. up in Topanga where it's just like arid vicious ecosystem yep. and then the rains come in and like it explodes everything is you just think about like, like that though you look at all the hillsides right and they're all covered with that native shrubbery right that shrubs and all those little dead plants and like the native like stuff the native crap Basically, that's your soil regulator, and that just sits there with the with protects the biology, gives it that buffer zone. And you look at any hillside, and you drive on any freeway, you look at any hillside that we're not watering, you'll never see bare ground. It'll always be like native shrubbery or like weeds or something will cover that land because Mother Nature won't allow that to happen. So it's like as soon as it rains, all that biology has been temperature regulated and protected, and it's just lying dormant, waiting for the rain to happen. So that happens like instantly because it's it's fully alive, and then you water it evenly and the temperatures and moisture levels are all even and it shit just comes alive like this and then but death comes back and like then yeah, two no water later. and then everybody <laughs> goes dormant but all that crap goes dormant and returns those nutrients to the surface and protects everything until the next rain comes and it's just trippy just to 
when you just, it's so weird. You just, you'll never see it. And the places you see bare ground and clear soil is like the Australian outback and like the fucking Mojave Desert. It's a lot of wild fennel. And yeah. But everywhere it'll be covered with something, whether it's weeds or sticks. I mean, she doesn't allow that. All right, man. so let's, uh, you want to grab your uh, shears? Yeah, yeah, you want to see that? You want to see a cool shear? You want to yeah, use the fun let's, shear? Yeah, let's, let's do the cool. Let's, All right, I'll be right back. I'll be we'll, right back. We'll measure temperatures. We'll... Time. We got all sorts of afternoon activities. Well, you got the vest on too. Yeah, here, squeeze that. That's an F. That's a Pam F2. This one is very similar to Mama. Very, 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 very similar. Well, of course, I, you, you just handed it to me as I have like wet hands. Oh, you're like, oh, I'm all sorry. Yeah, sorry. All right. Of course. You gotta, you know, molest that one a little bit because. It's in the bag and it's fresh, but it gets this weird, it gets weird funkiness to it. She's got some, that's got some cheese in yep. there. That's got some fruit funny, you know, some. Which one? This was which one? That's the Pam F2. That's that one right there. You know, and you smell this one? Squeeze. I did. Yeah. Give that, wow. break one of those. Break it and. It's nice now. I like these knives. Yeah. Like the small one. So how long, so you, what, little... what's your like drying curing process um, since you just finished it with this? Well, I wouldn't call that finished. I'd say it's in yeah. process. It's what we're smoking because that's what we're smoking. <laughs> um, but I like to I hang it pretty much full plant hang. You know, I'll, if, if they're seven footers, I got to cut it into three sections because I can't hang, you know, seven, eight footers like as easy with the floor space and stuff. So. You got to cut it into like pieces, a couple of pieces, but fewer pieces, the better, I think, to keep them the bigger stems and stuff on there is what I do. And then I hang them. I have a couple of big tents <coughs> that sit empty that I don't use anymore that big I use what? for big. big tents, big old old fashioned, like they're like a five by five, a six by something, just a couple old tents that I just don't use anymore. So I set them up about, you know, a month ago and I start hanging stuff in the tents and they sit in there, there's no fan. They sit open and then they're in a temperature controlled room. So like the room itself is like 60, 68 degrees. You know? So it's just it doesn't get like, it doesn't get fit. I would love to have it at 55, you know, and colder. Just heated but, by the sun? Huh? By the sun? Is no, I have a little, little air conditioning in this particular space. It's nothing crazy. And I can only get it to about 68 degrees. It's like the coldest without causing a problem. Um, so that's where they sit for, seven to ten days seven to you know something like that depending on the year if it's santa anna's like it was when those came down i mean it was like it was harder to keep it you know the the more leaves you keep on there the more stuff you keep on there the the, the more you can slow it down so i left more foliage on there you know during that time uh but yeah you're yeah seven to ten days they're hanging there and then they come out they go into bins big plastic bins and they kind of sit there and the bins the tops don't go on the bins, but they're on the bins, you know, because it's kind of air can kind of get in there. But then they kind of rehydrate a little bit, you know, by sitting in the bins for a little bit. And they're in that same room, same temperature. And then I start, you know, when everybody's asleep and I'm not too dead, I go to trim jail. And I start, <laughs> I break out the trim bins and I set up all my stuff and I get the, the things going and we, you know, we go to town and I usually trim for friggin' months, man. Because, wow. And I don't trim very much. I mean, this is the most trim you'll ever see it. And I just kind of like, I even like half trim part of it just to make them, you know, not look all leafy in the bag, you know, but I try to keep stuff on it through time because I can't get to it all myself. Yeah. You know, as you know, I have, like, you know. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. I run all kinds of businesses. I got kids. I got, yeah, I got to do it. And so it takes me a while to get the trim stuff done. So, but whatever you, you <laughs> are, are you, a, is that you're not, do you have a light? You're not putting it out into. No, the, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no. So every summer I'll grow enough. Yeah. Like, so last summer is like my seed summer. I made all seed and all my stuff was in the ground, big plants for seed. And that, that stocks up my seed, you know, uh, my coolers for my seed. And then that, that hurt my productivity for last year because it's 90% of my crop was for seed and then I had to rely on my indoor crop, you know, to pull my, my smoke, you know what I mean? Right. But yeah, so this year was the crop for, so for setting, up the, setting up the season and then now I'll go into seed and I'll do seed 
through the rest of this season and then the winter and stuff like that i'll go work on my seed stuff but projects. basically afterwards you're going to keep it on the vine for as long as possible yeah on yeah. the vine as long as possible and because uh, we've seen that even commercially people are getting into like selling it yeah man yeah on the vine yeah the old uh the old uh silver dragon cannabis i know that i, I yeah. met yeah and yeah i know i met that guy up in humble i forget his name yeah. really cool yeah. character uh really nice really radical dude and like he started talking about that and then i started seeing i'm like dude that, that, you know we talked about that it's it's really cool man he's a cool dude i really uh we talk every once in a while he came down to san diego a couple of times he's a he's a cool dude from yeah, the hills a little man pushback from people what <laughs> yeah people people don't like stems and they don't like leaves like yeah, you're making like, me do your work but no they, that's they, not cool they're that's, like oh like so but he's not selling it, to I them he doesn't care and you know? i get all twig and no there's a couple of us that appreciate that you know what i mean and that's yeah. that's that's where it that's where it is that's where it, i wouldn't base my whole um, thing on it but definitely right. is cool oh my god look at that thing yeah this is the felco 820 wouldn't go anywhere without it <laughs> Thing is a wow. thing is a beast. Don't put your finger. Don't I could, yeah. I always, I always wished for a daughter so that I could strap her boyfriend down and then take him into the garage and just start hacking on friggin' things, you know? Because I can cut through. I mean, I could cut through all this stuff. I mean, I could cut through this trunk of this tree with one, one swoop. I mean, it, it, it'll go through three inches like cheddar. Um, one of the coolest plants on planet Earth. I mean, planet tools on planet Earth, and it saves my life too because I do tons of pruning. And it's all push button. And I was gonna have to have surgeries and stuff, and it and it completely rehabilitated me. And you have good control on it, so you can. Yeah, so check it out. So you can shorten it down to small, precise, rapid cut motion, right? You want bigger cuts, you can get it up to lopper size, right, like that. And then if you really want, you have precision control, so you can just press it, and it's got precision control, so you can really be intricate. Just the same exact freaking tool as my sidearm here. Exactly, except it don't take any strength, which is the best yeah. thing in the world. It's not cheap. It's, it's like, like two a grand. Bionic robot but arm. it is a so robot arm. The, it's a and that's the battery. Yeah, it's a battery pack. I can store two batteries in here, which is cool. And the cool thing about it is I can charge this thing in like, I think I can get up to like you know somewhere around 24 hours of constant use, you know, or close to it. Maybe you know more than half a day a constant use, like constant use, it's like totally hacking through stuff. It's totally your best friend. It's my best friend. I mean, one charge usually lasts me a couple days because a big tree that normally took me three hours now takes me an hour and a half, you know what I mean? It cut but my still, time in half. But only gets so far open, so is there a larger version? There's this? other versions, but yeah. once, if it's any bigger than this, <laughs> Tom wants the big then version. I have, uh, and I got my chainsaw. sawzaws and chainsaws and other saws like that that are there. But like changing tools and stuff, like, I used to have to change tools all the time because you can't cut stuff with this like that, you know. So it saves so much time so let, and effort. So let's 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 give get me the to biggest it. one. Right, yeah. Where's the biggest? Let's let's cut That's it down so one. you can see it in action. Okay, let's see here. Let's just get this cleaned up. Let me shorten it down so it's quicker. All right. If you do any type of pruning or rose pruning or fruit tree pruning or ganja pruning, I mean, and you do a lot of it save your life man use a they have other ones that are a lot cheaper than this one that are like compressed air that do a similar thing you can just pop in a little little whippet thing or whatever <laughs> yeah. and uh or you can kind of go to th yeah yeah come in, come go to town for a little while you know and they work pretty good so i mean sorry home skillet <laughs> it looks like a, like a poodle that oh, got shaved down. right yeah. i'm gonna cut it down to the ground level because we want to you know utilize yeah. this right yeah. One cut. Beautiful. Nice and clean. See you later, brother. You know, that's the cambium layer, that green layer right in there. This is like, your, you know, this is your, your cambium. This so, is where we do lots of grafting and stuff. This is where we would split it. And I would put, you know, I'd put something into this bark. If this was upside down, this was the trunk of a tree. Yeah. And I cut the head off of it. And I wanted to actually graft this plant. So like this we're up. talking like plums. Yeah, and citrus, avocado, whatever. You basically cut off the... Say, here, right, say that's a tree, right? We cut his head off. We want to make this a different tree, and this is a plum, and I want to put a cherry on it, you know? You come up here, you cut its head off nice and clean. It's where you got a good cambium layer, and we take this sucker, and we'll split the bark just like so. Uh, kind of rock it in there, give it a good press, and then I can actually... 
crack this off a little bit. And this is not the tool to use, but I can do it because <laughs> I've done it a million size, times. The super size knife. And then you take a, the plant that you really want. You're like, oh man, I want the, I want this friggin' TK on the. On the friggin', you make a little, uh, it's gotta be nice and clean and not be nice and sharp, which is why you wanna use your, your grafting knife or something that's really makes <laughs> not a nice. Your, not your not dullest your, knife. <laughs> yeah, not the one that does my digging. But the idea is you expose about an inch and a half or so of the cambium layer on this side, and you can leave this back side here. And you make a little bit better cut here, but the idea is, since we're not talking about grafting, and then you slide this in just like a, a little pencil. Gently. And then you tape it up. Yep. Gently. And, and then on this side, you can see it like, and if this was a fruit tree, I'd slice this down a little bit more, and really make it perfect. But the idea is to break open that cambium layer slightly. Oh yeah. You pop, you pop it into the side, into this cambium layer, so that the part you cut falls right in line with the other stuff. And we take some tape or some grafting wax, and we would tape that sucker up, and bang, this thing would uh, harden off at the right time of year, and would all of a sudden fuse. And then this would be your own tree of whatever variety you put in, using this as the root stock. So and that's how like they graft it, all your fruits. You know, so that's one of the ways they do it. It's called a bark graft. So it'd be like if you gave my if you put like my brain onto a different body. Exactly. Yeah. Like Where you two different plants different. on one tree. I'd be like, yeah. thank you for the use so of your the body. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Have the genetics of both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, could you do this with weed? You can do this with weed. I've never. Um, <laughs> what was the wax you talked about? Just there, there's stuff called grafting wax. You can use any wax, honestly. I use, I've used candle wax where you just cut light a candle and you're literally dripping wax on there and basically you're just sealing up all the air holes. And you want to tape this really good with some stretchy tape or a grafting tape or you can use electrical tape. You can use various things, but you're basically going to push this down as hard as you can to force it against itself. So what about this? That you want to close up all of that in there? Yeah. Okay. So then you would. You don't want to put wax inside of any hole. Okay. You want to smear it over the top so that it doesn't like fall in there very easily. How the so fuck do you keep it from falling in? It's thick wax and it and it okay. and it'll, you can kind of just smear it over the top so it doesn't fall in. You know okay. what I mean? Or gotcha. you can use tape and it and it's an art. That's that's part of the okay. that's a part of the skill. You know what I mean? It's like taking out a transmission or whatever. There's little tricks that dudes do that we can, you know, get away with things that are like, how okay. the fuck did he do that? But no you know wax I mean? <laughs> down. But in you don't want to jam wax into the cut because then that will seal off the connection of where it needs to be touching to fuse together. So you want to cover it so air and water can kind of get in there and you can use tape to do that. You can use, it just depends on what you have on hand, how good you are. But um, that's that's a cool little side sidetrack thing on yeah, just grafting, like which is funny. Um, but yeah, you can technically do it with cannabis. I've never uh, set up a plant, which I meant to for years to just set up a host plant and Pam would be a good host plant for that. Now, and, and you can do it on another species, right? Like you could graft the cannabis onto... Uh, or hops, uh, the same family, right? So I don't know 100% if it would be successful, but hops and cannabis are related. I don't know if it's closely enough related to where we could actually graft it, right. but they have to be in the same family. They have to be like like prunus, plums and peaches and stuff. They're all a family of prunus, you know? So. Um, they have to be in the same family. Citrus, you can do it with citrus. You can put an orange, a lemon, on a grapefruit, a tangerine, all in one tree, and have a little citrus salad graft, and they do that, which is totally cool. But it's all citrus. They all got to be relatives, you know. Um, Wait, so you could on like the same base, you could have like <laughs> one arm that's a, that's a lemon, a grapefruit. The next arm's a tangerine. A, one's an orange, as you know, as many as you can support. So that's amazing. Or success. They sell them in like four or five grafts already. If you go to like a just a retail nursery and you're like, I want a citrus salad tree or a fruit salad tree. They call it fruit salad or citrus salad. You know, right. the citrus salad will have a lemon, a lime, an orange, a tangerine, and like a grapefruit or some other type of tangelo or some random fruit but you have like the staples plus one uh, and you can buy that tree for like 200 bucks in like a retail shop you know and plant it as long as with grafts each branch is its own tree so it each ha it has its own personality and, and own growth habit and own like things that it wants to do so you have to keep them all equal size because there's always going to be one i always say there's always one big brother that wants to grow bigger and stronger and faster than the other two big brothers and he'll dominate the other ones out of existence he'll take more of their food their nutrients and then all of a sudden 
your graphs start getting depleted and you got this one thing that was really tough. So you keep them pruned so that each graft is about the same equal size mass and then they'll all play together and have a good time. So they just, it's, it's more of a, like a talking concept and like, I got this, this is really cool. Right. It's a pastime thing. Production, it sucks. Don't plant that tree because <laughs> you're doing all kinds of stuff and you got to prune it too much and your production suffers. And it's just like, you know, it's just, it's a lot of work, but it's very cool. Um, very cool. All right, so let's see you do this one. All right. That's it, man. If you had one on each arm. I know. Ha! Ha! Edward Scissorhands. Philco yeah. A20. And then we can just leave this on and top. And put it in here. I would dig it in, you know, if you want to get its full maximum benefit. But then you cut cover it, up it a Or you bit. cover it with mulch, or you cover it. Right. Because if you just leave this on the surface, the sun will oxidize a lot of that nutrition and you won't get its full benefit. Right, You'll get right, benefit, right. but you won't get it like, you know, the, the full, the full deal. So however you kind of want to, but I would dig it in there and cover Tom, it. This is our rebirth. This. Yeah. Totally. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry, brother. Well, that's okay. I mean, the thing is, is this is a lesson right here. He taught you, man. That's... But they also, they did so well up until that point that there's a lot. <laughs> you take from it for sure. Yeah, man, every year is a new learning experience, bro. I learned something so new maybe every just, year. Yeah, I was going to say right now we could cut some of these up into smaller pieces, and then we can just bury them later. I always make killer pokers out of, you know, a good stem or two, man. I make some killer pokers out of those things. I make a mic stand out of a few, just like that Mendo dope. I got a couple of those. We got these two. Can Tom, oh, can nice. Tom pull the I know, trigger so, on this I know, it's, I know, I know. You do it, man. I know. I know exactly how you feel, brother. Tom, let's do it. No, it's like a it, quick brother. bullet to the head. <laughs> you want me to take it off yeah, for you? you take it off. You want this? Well, it's, yeah. We'll yeah you want to see what that. you got? Yeah, we'll keep it. See what you got here. I mean, yeah, you keep it so it doesn't fall in the dirt and get more dirty or whatever. Yeah. And I'll give you this other top here. I'll give you a couple of these tops. You guys can kind of sort through those tops. Oh, beautiful. A little bit better. See if there's anything left in there. That one's toast. Yeah, bang, bang, just because it's fun. How much do those cost? Uh, they're like, it's about two grand oh, for the right. thing. They're like, yeah, probably 1,800 so we'll, and change. We'll save up for that one. Uh, you, it, you can get, you can, yeah, you can get, uh, you can get, like I said before, you can get the ones that are less um, expensive. They're for like four or five hundred dollars. This plant was not here. My my gardener actually. Actually, some of it. these look it's good. From, it's it has nothing to do <laughs> yeah, with this. Let's get that out of here. <laughs> I was gonna say is like here are all my yeah. fucking Okay, wait, check mice. this out. Check this out. Let's see what this says actually. Why we're standing uh, here, right? Temperature. Yeah, let's see what it says. Just for grins, right? <laughs> it's probably not bad, but let's just this, see what it says. Uh, this one. Yeah, this looks okay. Look this looks pretty good, actually. Yeah. Have you been picking? Uh, I haven't found it. Ninety-three. So what does that mean? So above eighty-five. One ten wow. on the outside of that fabric pot right there. You got wow. one ten right there. Wow. How hot is it right. outside right now? I think it's less than one ten. Well, it's a lot less than yeah. one ten. It's like seventy <laughs> degrees. It's like seventy-five degrees, <laughs> right? So, so if you, you you can imagine like this sitting in the sun, it's one hundred and ten, right? Now it's not 110 throughout that whole thing, but everywhere where those surface roots are, everywhere where that, that most action is there, where the life is happening, it's, it's above 85 degrees. And when you get above 85 degrees, most plants are like, fuck that. They sh start shutting down, they stop drinking water. And then usually above 85 degrees, the workers that live in the soil, the microbes and other things, they don't live there or they don't want to work anymore. So they yeah, go to sleep, like, I'm gonna take my they, go to, they die, they do that. And then being uncovered, there's no way for any of those organisms to really occupy and live there like efficiently. So he's hungry, he's hot, and he's not drinking water for most of the time that he exceeds the the you know that 85 mark and i mean they can they can do okay at 85 degrees but once you start getting 110 you know 99 i mean it's n nothing wants to be over 100 degrees we don't want to work on 100 degrees 
they don't want to work in 100 degrees. It's just that's that's just the nature of the biz. So I always want to shoot what it is. And these are even the tan ones, right? And you're shooting the outside of the tan pots, and those are supposed to reflect the heat, which they do tr tremendously compared to the others. But that's still 109 degrees, right? So, but they need the sun. So right. the, the idea yeah. is, Tom, what do you do? You cover it. It has to have cover. You have to have that clothes over the skin to protect it, so that it at least has that buffer zone uh, that will drop. And if you look at anything in Earth that's actually covered with the appropriate amount of, of <laughs> stuff, this, it'll always be barren yard. It'll always be about 60 to 60 to 85, but it'll always be about 75 degrees. You go anywhere on Earth, right? So let's check this out. We just, you had this straw out here. Move the straw aside. You're at 82 degrees. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's so way better than... How about, let's do, let's do this? That yeah. was the whole point. We had, I had the straw in here. As yeah, well. so that's, that's, that's correct. So then you're regulating better. So can, can we yeah. check out this And, you're, and you're, below, you're below that 85, right? And I mean, this, like I said, it's below that down low and other things. But that's that. It's this. It's, it's this. If you feel the soil, if you reach down, you can touch the soil. It feels and it's cool. hotter, and it's as hot as your body, or warmer. Then it's got your soil's got a fever, and it's not functioning to where it should be. Yeah, you know, in yeah, a lot of cases, cool. and that's beautifully cool. Let me ask you right, something. and it's sitting in full sun, 81 degrees right now, where it was 100, 100 so, degrees on the surface. We're questions. crushing it down so, below. But yeah. early on, the bamboo I had up, and they were really thriving when they were within the bam this bamboo structure I put up. They were getting plenty of sun. But also it was interspersed, so the leaves were being cooled. And so is that something? Is that, you know, was that, a, you know. So when the plants are young, they don't have a lot of mass. They're not dropping a lot of shade onto the canopy floor, right? Under there. So there's more exposure. It's more, uh -huh. you know, more apt to temperatures fluctuating. So if you don't have a ton of mulch or they're really young, it'll get hotter quicker. So having the bamboo created more shade and more moisture was able to hang out there for longer. And that was, that was totally fine. Okay, so here's uh, my other yeah. question. Out here in the valley, we reached 117. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was day. not. Yeah, it was so, not. Pretty. You know, yeah. Was that mine? Yeah. That's not you, right? So That's I, yours. I was okay. in the same position, and I mean, I didn't have any problems at all. I mean, granted, I'm in the ground. Right. So when you're in the ground and you're at 110 for a couple of days, right. the plants can tolerate that as long as you put water out there and they, they're okay. You got cover, you're good. The temperature, it's 110 outside. If you got cover on the ground, it'll still be below 85 degrees. It'll still be right in that habitable zone no matter what. And that's the beauty of it all. And you can go to the redwood forest or the Amazon or any place where plants are growing and we're not, scratch aside the, the forest floor and shoot the soil. And it will always be in that range, 60 to 80, 60 to 85, always. That's where nature regulates the temperature. That's the magic zone, you know, and that's, there's even a book about it called like 59 degrees so the, about the, the forest plant will be able to about respirate we will be able to do all of that as long as it's cool down below. and then every all the okay. organisms and things that want to live there will want to work and occupy and do that and you don't want it too cool because below that you know below 60 you got a band of they, yeah nobody wants band. to work below it starts getting cold they start shutting down and doing their thing it, it, so it can go in the reverse but the insulation keeps it from jumping around and keeps it from going either way too far which is really cool so that's the importance of the of the mulch like firsthand like not having it and having it you can see the difference in and what the temperature is you know what i mean and that and that has a great effect on everything so, so can we use that tool to just cut these big pieces up yeah, a little yeah, bit brother. and then we'll oh, yeah. You Mix had one guy later. on who said that when it got really hot he sort of was misting his plants a little bit so I would never mist my plants during the heat of the day yeah. or after. <laughs> well, he did say that. Or after or no, after no, about. Nobody said he that. He did. He, no. put, he set the mist. He said he goes he, he above them. Just yeah, to, so yeah. like that, that's how you get powdery mildew problems because you're increasing the, 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 the drastic shifts in humidity and things, right? So if you do it before, Someone right? Someone who came here? No, it was on one uh, on your show. In, so so on, like in on, Arizona. I'm from Arizona originally. Yeah. Like my, my grandparents, everybody lives out there. It's 120 degrees every day. I mean, it's just freaking miserable from May on. You know what I mean? And there are misting systems and things. But the way you keep out of trouble is it's like early in the morning, like, like late morning tops 
yeah. you can miss. You're done. But as then soon as you're, you're at <laughs> noon or afterwards, and we're at that peak, and the sun is at its crucialist point down, no. and it's at, and you're just especially, you're, it, you're just, you're hurting yourself. I think. Yeah. I think it, you it, should. If I don't hit you my just plan, yeah, by like burning in the, pool. In the yeah. I mean, I'd rather don't. water the ground, which is still cause for concern after that noon because of the moisture and stuff. But I'd rather do that than spray the plants themselves, just because it's just such a drastic fluctuation, and that's kind of what happens. But when it's over 110 degrees anyway, powdery mildew really can't live in those high temperatures anyway. So it's kind of like, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world because at high, high temperatures, they tell you heat, heat will kill the mildew spore, you know, above, I think it's above 95 degrees or something, will actually start killing the mildew spores for a certain period of time. So if you're over 110 and you're misting, Mildew is not your problem, but if it, the next day and the day after aren't 110 and it's in those ranges for mildew to take hold, you've created, you know, so, a well, problem in my opinion, way. you know, so that way. Did you see any problems with any of the crops or any of the people you've been working with that hit 115 no. or above? So okay. it, it's so the guys that had them in pots like you. There was there was an old an old friend of mine. I, I, I call him I call him the cool old guy, but um, he he has bigger pots than that. I think they were like 30 gallon or something. They were uncovered and they were the fabric pots. And during that heat wave, the, the plants that were in there really drooped and suffered and all of the pistols started to, to turn and really had a bad effect on the plants themselves to the point where they never came back out of it to where he had to harvest them early. Um, the ones in the ground are gonna be a lot more resilient to the temperatures. The, especially if you have the, the mulch down. If you yeah. don't have the mulch down, then you're in trouble. That's gonna have a hard time in those temperatures. But they can tolerate, they don't like it. They just don't do much in it. So if, they, if you can just get them to not do anything as opposed to like get sick, then that's better than, than, you know what I mean, going downhill, you know? So you just, on those hot days, you gotta make sure that they're well hydrated in the soil early <laughs> or later that, that Tom, night before. Tom, Tom's yard is an example of like, this area which is always in the shade and has the same irrigation is like yep. your feet sink into always the ground mushy. yep and then yep. over here always hot yep. it's like always hot and dry and then you have like no, some spots actually which there are, it kind of runs down there so it stays soft here it's it's totally hard. it's almost I mean, like you we just moved in so we're just you trying need to, to kill the sprinklers on that side for deal with this i have to kill the sprinklers and uh, i have to figure out which section does these and kill those and and but yeah, this is as hard as a rock. All right, so this is yeah, all a little, small uh, little calcium. So, can... so get some, get some yeah. of that calcium. Right. Give it some calcium and give it some microbes, man, and that stuff will come back. Calcium will loosen up the soil structure. I love that. It will give a little bit of something. Give calcium. it some microbes. You can try doing something like that. <laughs> but yeah, you know, feed it too. But cells. I mean, egg raw shells. milk. Do you guys eat eggs? I do. You do. I'm gonna say the You gotta look shells. up Chris yeah. Trump, man, and learn how to make the WCA stuff. That works good. Absolutely. So. But, so good you know, job. Yeah, so right. let's chop up more of this stuff for you here. Yeah, actually, yeah. help you out a little bit. <laughs> this is so much more satisfying than if we had to. Right. Cut all this. Stuff <laughs> you I got a hand on my hip, brother. No. We're good. Tom, you know? show like, me no the, problem. Show me the shears we would have used. Where are yours? <sighs> Mine are. Uh... Well, no, yours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what we would have been chopping with. Tom has like some. Yeah, you uh, chop paper something scissors. in here, brother. Give a okay. chop here. Give me that a cut. No, the, that, this is all I got. Yeah, that works. Yeah, it would have worked. Go. They don't get very wide, though. It would have been problematic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as soon as I got this, man, I was, ha I was having all kinds of problems. My shoulders and my wrists. I couldn't lift things out of the fridge or pick up my kids. No. Doctors wait, wait, wanted to give me surgery. Used, so, you know, putting a layer of straw on top of raised beds is something kind of everyone does. You but should. Like, would you ever just use, like I have so many. Uh, you could use it in the garden too. When I was gonna say, I have so many yeah. leaves that like, can you just put, like what's wrong with a layer of leaves? Is that equally, cause I feel like everyone it's has beautiful. leaves. beautiful, it's what you so should then use. why do people buy straw? People throw away what they should be using on their land. So at my house, nothing leaves my land like in the green bin. My green bin is always empty. Like I never put it out on the street for collection for anybody to take. Like all the leaves that come off of the, the plants or the trees or the branches that I cut or the grass that's mowed or any debris from the, from the land all either gets put on the ground as mulch. You know, if it's nice leaves, I always put out leaves at the end of the year. As soon as everything drops, I'll rake up a bunch of leaves and dump them in my orchard. 
That is magic, man. That's leaf, all that good leaf but molds. But then how come so many people with raised beds don't just use the leaves around their yards? Because to... most people are afraid of the diseases that come with the plants that they're using. So okay. like if they got so a bunch of leaves that fell, they know it's cleaner, right? And they're not, they're worried about the, but the, the idea that I have in my mind is, yeah, obviously you don't want to put a bunch of disease like directly on your thing, but Tom, nature, nature is not stand right over there. Like nature is not really picking and choosing. And in, in most cases, the good will always outweigh the bad. And if you got a good system, well, so cause what I do with my leaves is, is they're dry and then I let them totally dry out. Then that's the I perfect mulch in the world, bro. Well, so you don't want to use, use eucalyptus leaves. You don't want to use uh, straight mulberry. pine pine needles. Mulberry, great, excellent food source. Or magnolia. For... No, magnolia. Magnolia sorry. is not the end of the world. That'll work too. That's fine. Okay, if they're really I've, dry, they're, they're good. They're, if they're, they're really wet, I, I, no, 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 I, yeah. let them, I let them bake in the sun. Then you're good. Then, try, then yeah, and cru even if they're crushed well, a little so bit, that's fine. Well, so someone was uh, Pedro this morning was saying he's been collecting pine needles, and I was like. That's, so yeah. that's what I said because I, no. I had a pine forest growing up, no. and like nothing else nothing grew, will grow under the pine. Yeah, so pines emit tannins through their leaves, through their roots, through their needles, through everything that they create, and these they're these oils that kind of discourage the growth of Can other I plants. Get you to yes, cut sir. That right there. Yes, sir. Um, so when you plant underneath of a eucalyptus, or a pine tree, or any of those things, it's a constant oil forests from those trees that are segregating themselves off so that's why you say you go to a pine forest you only see pine trees for the that most part that was my opinion and like and other things was like, plus wrong. they're really really acidic that's and like I, adding too many point. of them can throw things out of balance but it's really the oils and the tannins in them but so anything in a small quantity in a, in a small it, quantity like i'm okay with the small the quantity okay. yeah yeah less than yeah five percent or less go for it no problem okay. right um, not a problem, but like if you're starting to use that as like your source all the time, or like it's your main source, then hell no, don't don't ever use pine needles like that, uh, or eucalyptus leaves. But once they are really dry and over, you know, overly dead and been around for a season or two, sitting there, if you're gonna store it, then things the, will the lose pine. their tannins, and you can start okay. using it to turn into carbon that's usable. Well, again, and I know? think I think that's yeah. where they're talking about introducing it, probably. Yeah. So if you're gonna take it through a process or something, and then like you know do it in right. some way then so that's okay no but to collecting it and no using it as mulch no i wouldn't do that yeah that's no good yeah but those are the two big ones that i wouldn't use is eucalyptus leaves and pine needles Fact like as checking <laughs> but other than that uh i mean most things are pretty pretty good and especially if it's good and dead and it's been dead a long time you're better off if you're going to do chop and drop like i do a lot of chop and drop where you're dropping dr green stuff like this on so the ground ta talk to me about what you're seeing here like healthy i mean th this is looking healthy so some people say like the the hollow stems is like boron or other right. things um some of my hollow stems are some of my best plants like in a lot of cases where I'll go through and I'll be like, oh, you're the hollow. And it's, sometimes they have like the most well, terpene. I noticed that. But I mean, this isn't hollow down here. It's just hollow on the... And there's going to be a little hollow where the sap is and it'll lose it, you know, lose it over time, you know. And sometimes they really harden up. But you see all that sap that's kind of in there. And like as I break this, everything in there kind of collapses too, you know. So it's, it's, it's not quite as hollow as it kind of appears, but it is hollow. And that is nutrition in some way. I mean, towards the end of the flower cycle, it's using a lot of the minerals and the micro minerals. Isn't that and, what's passing you know, through there? And yeah, it and that's good. got it's sending it a sure lot of does. nutrition through the cambium yeah. around the outside layer. That internal Tom, I think you is a should different. get naked and roll around in this uh, <laughs> bed before you go inside. Do you want me to chop this one? You want to it's, save this one? It's not Tom, worst, what do you want to do? Is idea. Do you want me to do right. some of this? Uh, yeah, this can be chopped. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. step out of line there. So, so you wouldn't uh, use one of those like mulchers that you could buy at Home Depot and just like... I would, but I'd mulch it into a corner and let it oh, sit yeah, for a yeah. while. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Heck yeah. Now, yeah. Well, actually, that, that, why, why wouldn't you bury it in here like you're doing? Like, so in now? small scale, like if you're going to chop and drop, like yeah. I wouldn't do a whole just slew of just tons of just green stuff on the ground. Uh, sometimes with like trees anyway, like the bark and those things, like the the raw woods and things that aren't but that aren't broken th this down this isn't too much this isn't too okay. much you can till this in this will turn into common and it's softer stuff it's not right. necessarily like a a tree would be or a but if know, we had like three times the amount of this yeah like, i would let's throw i would try to do yeah i'd spread okay. it out a little bit um just because sometimes the green stuff takes energy to break down right. so if you're demanding resources sometimes it robs from other things especially with barks and different things that are too fresh It'll steal nitrogen and other nutrients and things and, and to its process. So just letting it 
do a thing. Is satisfying. It'll be better well, off, you know. There's a certain satisfaction. It's like when you're, you know, done doing a play and you strike the set. Um, there's a certain satisfaction. I swear, like, that's, every, the, that's every... the noise that, like, uh, <laughs> like, uh... Um, You'd be surprised. Nobody knows Ro that this Robocop, exists, you know? Uh, oh, I love it. As a like, matter of fact, you can maybe as he sell walks. some of those. It's insane, you know. People should be purchasing those. They should. They absolutely. I go to all these nurseries. People are like, what the hell is that? It's like, man, it took me a while if to realize, too. If you have too. a large grow and you're doing a lot so. of pruning, pruning, how much do those cost? About $2,000. These $2, ones are almost 2000 yeah. Wow. If you want, like, an extra battery and, like, all the funny stuff. Wow. Yeah. So they're no joke. Uh, do you they can get, sell you can a get, smaller version? You can get a smaller less, version yeah, for Tom, like 500. Maybe, ooh, Tom, now we're getting into you know, the price Somewhere range. in there. It's not quite the same, maybe but we'll it is the same. One. It's much better than that. But like, what's the <laughs> brand? Is this like Philco. the best? Philco. Philco's the best, man. Okay. No, I don't care. Need this, that if you're doing Philco's like the best. Swiss, Swiss made. This thing right here is freaking guaranteed for life. And the reason why so it's maybe also we'll the best is the reason why is like you can buy all these parts at a nursery. Like every blade, every screw, every piece of this thing. Like, you they know, like, everyone, it's like DeWalt. They like stock all it. the parts. Everyone has to stock all the parts. So all you need to do is buy this once and you can change the blade for 12 bucks and it's good for forever again. You know what I mean? Over and over again. Um, they're the shit. They, they work way better than anything else. They're the shit. So I've used everything. These are the, these are the best ones. Do you want any of these... Uh sweet compromise buds for your compost at home <laughs> so all of my uh, trim one thing i'm not lacking is is stuff to put into my compost all my trim everything that i take down all the stalks all the leaves all the crappy buds all the trim that i would make hash out of all that goes back into the orchard under the floor just goes to the forest floor because it's all it's all the bioaccumulated stuff from my orchard anyway it's full of nutrition and that just goes out to the mulch pile every year i got a big it started, trash they, bag this full purple of it, you know? started coming out at, at a certain yeah. point. And I don't know what, what, like, if that was. Well, that's that's what they're, that plant was going to do. It was going to give a little purple into Damn it, and you were going to get a little bit of color. <laughs> and uh, as the fall approached, you were going to get gets a little. It worse and worse. The veining started happening, which was cool. And it's that would have been really pretty. I mean, it, it still kind of is, but it really would have been a nice, let's, pretty uh, thing, you let's know? Let's chop that one, too. I mean, I'd. I mean, I could show you some friggin' beauties just sitting underneath the net, dude. Just happy as can be. Just some beauties, you know? Oh. Like, they're just like... And beauty is Literally, not an literally looking can, at Moz can, can, and, like, can, giving him the you, finger. You know what I mean? Like, no joke. Can like, you get uh, that one? I'll yes, bring, sir. I don't want to bring the whole... Yes, sir. Nice. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't care, like making room like i just i, I don't want to spray anything man so we started using those nets some people don't like the nets they think it you know some people can't put them can up they don't have go, the space is that too hard to go in no way bro all right <laughs> that's, oh. just, uh, that's that's what that's what tom asks his wife sometimes so this is pretty much history in. as well right yeah let's we let's, have just, let's just that. start fresh i would uh I mean, there's not even anything on yeah, here. Just, yeah, just, I'll leave you with a bag or two of that stuff over there, so you won't you won't be lost 100. percent I'm sorry, dude. Merry Christmas, Merry fucking Christmas. Well, this this like, but this taught you so much, you know. I mean, like seriously, you're you're you've learned shit you didn't even know you no, learned. It's been, you'll remember next year. You'll be like, fuck, man, this is how it's done, brother. Taught us that there's a cool tool that we must have. Because I'm all, <laughs> I'm all into forensics of any kind, so this has been forensically. Do you totally watch uh, Investigation Discovery? Yes, dude. It's on, <laughs> it's on like 85% of the time, courtesy of Laura. She loves them. Yeah, I think women get totally into like, it's like murder mystery after murder yeah. mystery after murder mystery. And I don't mystery. know if she's like, like plant, you know, you, you never know what's going on. So what's on. that one? 97 inside, 104 on the outside. Wow. So it's not, I mean, I mean, that's like, that's livable temperatures, but being in such a small space, Plants are going to have a hard time. Well, that, yeah, man. no, I, I, yeah. I think in the, I mean, yeah. for the rest of the year, we'll be fine. Cause okay, so. Yeah, yeah exactly. Perfect for the right. cool so weather. No, no, yeah. but so, warmer, so, you know? so there's a real. Work like, both ways. But so there's a real ideal purpose for these small cloth pots, like, because they do tend to get hot. And so. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it seems like they're not, like, you don't want to keep your plant in there for very long because it's just too hey. hot and in environment. In the wintertime, I think, is a good time to use those personally because they keep warmer 
than a plastic outside shell would, right? That plastic pot on the outside is gonna get cold no matter where you put it, no matter what, unless so you have a perfect So could this be tank. a starter environment? That before. is a great winter pot, in my opinion. It's like a starter winter pot, you could grow small plants in there easily in the yeah, winter also, time. Yeah, I mean, in the summer, I mean, I have uh, huge squash and, uh, and I mean, yeah. strawberries growing. I mean, in. you can, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you it's not the, it's, they're things. good, and people pull lots, and if you've been using it, my dad always says, best tool in the toolbox is the one that works for you, that you know how to use, use and that's it and some people man those are superstar you know pots for and that's fine so what do you use but personally i use regular old pots like regular old black plastic pots and the ground those are the two things that i use um period that's what nurseries have been using for you know 100 hundred plus years and i mean it's just that's just that it's nothing if you transplant appropriately then the root tips and all that stuff, all that stuff doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. You know what I mean? If you're just growing a healthy plant, you're, you, sh I mean, the outside of my pots are root tips and hairs and beautiful shit when I pull them out of there. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not the end of the world. And also the thing that I didn't like about the, the fabric pots the most out of everything was transplanting them. Like you can't get them out of there without kind of like ripping or, or doing stuff unless it's a Velcro one. And those well, ones were cool. Actually, that's what I was just those ones talk were about. cool. Yeah. So the Velcro ones were cooler because I was stoked on the Velcro versions because you can pop that out of there a lot easier. But like I said, if it works for you, it works for you. I'm good so, with that. So, but that said, you can get a more amenable environment in these larger yes. beds. Larger right? beds. Yes. That's got good breathability. The larger situation, I think, are a way more better idea on that aspect because wood rots. Fabric you can kind of get away with. Mm. It takes a lot of time. It's lighter to set up mm. and move. So if and you're not ready for the four by eight. So I'm good with that. Maybe. So if yeah. you're not in the ground, or I just believe, get one I believe, yes. Because then you're at four by exactly. eight. Exactly. Yeah. I believe that you need the more space, especially if you're growing with soil, yeah. you need a bigger battery. The bigger battery means you need a bigger space to pull from. Well, it's not going to get hot and that. cook you. Is you know there what a I mean? big difference between having a two by four and a four by four? Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Yeah, there is. There is. No, yeah. yeah, it's a bigger yeah. universe yeah. for the, there is. the, the it's life. It's just to... their squish. Yeah, they just yeah. You just don't have enough. I mean, you're living in mom's basement. You know, you have a, you yeah, have an I mean, end, right? You this know? is mom's basement, right? And, and this is this is better. You got your own place, right? You got a little one bedroom, right? So you're a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It's That's a little right. bit better. That's I right. mean, shoot though, if you don't have to pay rent in mom's basement, you might be able to get away with. Rent. So there are benefits both ways, That's but right. bigger is always better okay. in my opinion. Let's see what the gray one is, anyway. One fifteen. 116. Soil's moist in this. It's moist. But it's, it's that's at 96 and wet. So the soil's wet. It's at 96. So the even though that there's water in here, the plant can't uptake it properly because of the temperatures. It's kind of in hold mode to not, you know, so that it's, it's too hot anyway. So, and you can also see the plant itself. Yeah. The leaves are tacoed like taco shells, yeah. right? And when they taco up like that, Tomatoes are kind of, they do that anyway in the sun. That's one of their defense mechanisms. But all plants that kind of taco up like taco shells like that are trying to make themselves so smaller, minimize their exposure surviving. to the sun, yeah. and try to drink any dew that settles on the leaves, you know, so they can funnel it to the, to the roots. It means they're too hot or they need more water. And those are two, those are the two signs classically. And then you shoot it with a thermometer and it's too hot. And you can see it's telling you that, you know, just by the way that the leaves are cupping in that regard. So things that that tells you, you know. But you don't even need one of these. All you need to do is go like this. And if it's as hot as you or hot, and then you need to figure out a right. way to just, just slow it down. And, and in the winter, you well, want this. It actually kind of feels a little cooler. Yeah, so on that back not, side, yeah. Yeah, on that side, because yeah, yeah. I have shade over there. But, right. and, and like I said, it, yeah, works, it works both ways, to benefit and yeah. to detriment. That's you know right. what I mean? It just depends. It's a, it's a, you deploy it in the right situation, it's a star for you, you know? All right. But... Every, you set up one of these, man, you'll get every nug. Guarantee I it. love it. It'll be ugly, and it, you know, but hey, you get every nug. If you set up a nice one like this, you know, like I do, you can walk in there and just hang out with them. That's what I'm And gonna then do. like at night and stuff, like no bugs are biting you and shit because you're in your freaking little, little mosquito hut, you know what I mean? You can, you can work in there and it's safe and it's clean and it's just, it's just cool. And it's not, I mean, it's not super expensive. 
any Joe you know, can do it. Makeshift to to be able to do that. It's not. I no. Mean, it's nothing. It's real. It's nothing. It's yeah. makeshift, but it's totally yeah. effective. It totally works. And yeah. I mean, like, it's something like I bought weird stuff. I have real greenhouses. I I oversee in cool commercial operations. I mean, we've I've I've had hundred lighters. Can you? And then at home, I deploy friggin' PVC pipe and mosquito the netting. Soil you know, of our <laughs> the tree here and tell me like. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's good stone. because it's got cover, right? So this grass serves as your mulch. This is your cover zone. It's a color that's not gonna, it's gonna be a buffer. It's at 84 degrees, so it's okay. below that mark, right? And that's on the surface of the grass. If you go under the grass, which we can't, it'll be much cooler than that. So our- The our, leaves aren't toccoing, right? They're not these, really these have toccoing. Shriveled up. They were like- Yeah, the flowers will, yeah. Yeah. Just that's normal. Really hot. Okay. That's normal. It'll so go through a bloom period. Okay. It'll shrivel up and set its seed, and, and then and the nut, and, and then, then you this go. is where it should be. That's where it should be. Yeah. Uh, you don't. I don't love when when air can kind of swoop underneath of a root like mm. this, right? Mm. Like having them at the surface is where mm. you want it. Mm. But when air and stuff can kind of start ripping through there and other places, I would always suggest adding a little bit of something just to cover that. Like what? A little bark chip. Couple okay. leaves, right. straw. Okay. Just don't pile it up on like crazy, but just just cover it up so air doesn't swoop underneath that crown. Okay. And yeah. it's not, yeah. You know, it will okay. live like this just fine, and you'll see that in nature just fine. I just it just eliminates a, a beacon for me personally. Beautiful. Uh, it'll keep them ha extra healthy, and you won't have to worry about it. All right. Should we call it a wrap on that? This has been great. <laughs> I mean, look, look, look. Look what is not there anymore. I know. Sad, isn't it? But we get to restart. But you get to start. That's the fun part. Now that's it's right. all the dreams start again. That's you right. know and, what I mean? And there's a... There's a uh, and look at that. That soil is going to be humming. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of throw some compost in there. Turn that up a little bit. Can mm -hmm. I get some compost from you? Yeah. I mean, there's some, like, you know, like I said, like, some people will freak out and be like, oh, there's botrytis in there. And there's, you know, it, you know. But we haven't seen uh, that, I don't know. really worry about that stuff. You practice a good system. You put that down on the ground. You know, you got healthy stuff. I think that, you know, I don't ever have botrytis at my house. And I do that every year. Granted, mine's in a food forest. And it's like in the ground. But it's everywhere already as it is. And it's our job to have good cell walls and good practices to keep it from being able to penetrate. You know, so honestly, I don't think that you have any issues there. But yeah. I'm sure there's somebody that'll be like, yo, hey. Oh, there'll that, definitely be some yeah. comment. We can I've done, I've done, yeah, I've done <laughs> this, this a million times. You know what I mean? This, I, this section is, is where you'll see the spike in the comments. This is full. <laughs> this is full on, like proven. You know, what I mean, over years of time, and I, you know, it is what it is. So, do what you do. Nice. Oil. Do what works for you, man. That's all I gotta say. I came out one night and shined the light on the buds, and it was like Christmas. It was like it was. It was all crystals and trichomes all across the bud and the leaves and everything. And I'm like, I never thought I'd be able to create this. I've seen I it know. many times I in know. other people's grows. I've I know. visited so, so many grows, but I'd never. And it's finally, I know, man. I remember that feeling, you, dude. I remember, I'm like, dude, I did this. This is better than all that stuff on the fucking <laughs> shelf. This is amazing, you know? Yeah, it's no, it's, it, you can, you can. You just got to get to the end. It's these little things. They'll just make you get to the to the very end. I called know? Peter. I'm like, I need help. He's like, I'm in Rhode Island. There's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Show you a pic. I, well, I told you what to do or what to look for. I did. I looked for them and found them. <laughs> so here, check this out right here. Look at this. Looks great. Uh, hang on a second. Let me find you a good little bacon grease here. A couple of these that are coming on right now here. Mm. Uh, let me pull up mm. one of these for you here. Uh, and what else do you uh, do? You grow uh, other uh, like there's a there's a there's another phenotype of dog beach that isn't ready yet. Beautiful. That one's a nasty gas one right there. That's a good one. The but one you in, grow like peppers and I grow everything, brother. Everything. Um, Beautiful. Literally, I mean, I have here's a couple here's a couple of those. I mean, there's a couple of tents right there. Oh. You know, there's a little. Part of my little, you know, little thing. That can that, you send that, is that you know, to him? You know, a couple of those little things. I don't know if you can see yeah, part of those things. Yeah. Right? Send me those. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a couple of those where they're just sitting up and, you know, they're just, they're just doing what they do. Sweet. And that's um, mosquito netting. Yep. Yep. That's big. That's like... Just easy. Yeah. I mean, that's not, like I said, man, there's man. a lot of ways to skin a cat. I mean, that's I'm right. a, I'm no, a frugal I'm gonna put fool. A door. I'm a farmer, I'm going to put a yeah. door in one. <laughs> yeah, you can. No, you can't. Just get an over flap and you just, you just flap it over and then you set a rock on it. 
Right. And it'll pull it tight and you can just open it right up, man. Anytime you want or you can, I mean, you can, you get creative, bro. You can make them tall and skinny. You can make them. Well, there's, there's, it has to happen because we get a lot of moths. You're, I mean, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. the here is, you, it's unbeatable. Yeah. You're either going to spray your ass off. Right. Or you're going right. to deploy preventative right. measures. But this is the type of solution that I love. Yes. I, I don't love yeah. it. It's inexpensive. Yeah. It's hands-on. Yeah. It doesn't compensate for monitoring everything. No, no, know? nothing does. Nothing, nothing's yeah. better than the farmer's shadow. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I mean, you have to be, you have to be present. The love factor, the, Farmer the Tom. presence. You know what I mean? Tom's that's, green thumb. That's the difference between. You know what I mean? That is the difference. It's the well, farmer's shadow. Laura, who you haven't met, I don't know why she hasn't come out. She has a good green t thumb too, but, but, um, she's accusing me of having one now. <laughs> that's, that's nice. Well, you, you will now. You got it, you know. <laughs> you got a chest full of stuff, man. You're going to be in good shape. And like I said, you can deploy that for everything. I throw all kinds of crap. Like, I set up these things for random stuff all the time. Like, <laughs> for all kinds of stuff. Like, I'll be like, oh, shit, I'm going to have to set up a fucking hoop. I'll just set up a hoop. And, like, that solves the problem. You know what I mean? And I don't have to worry about it anymore. I got too much to do. You know what I mean? Solves I mean, yeah, and I got to I want to set up a, a small worm bin, too. That's easy, man. Yeah, I help yeah, you with that, that, too. That's super easy, you know, bro. I know it's easy. I just got to do it. Yeah, it's easy. And uh, I don't think I need a tremendous amount of compost, so I can probably, you know. Yeah, man. You just use, you know. Use. You buy a good bag <laughs> of compost. And yeah, do yeah, that. I can buy it. Do some compost extract. And yeah. I was making teas. I can make, I've been making, I got, so, I don't know if you've ever heard of Organics Alive. Yeah, 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 I have. But uh, it was their products and regimen that, uh, that you were resulted. Doing? Yeah, oh, I was yeah. following their regimen. And they were using looking their good. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah, I know those guys. They they got their stuff into uh, Anderson's Nursery down by me when they were just getting started. It was like one of those new guys, and he was in there doing the rep, and I was the I was the manager at the time uh, at the nursery, and uh, they ended up bringing them in. Uh, shortly thereafter, Peter and they started using some of that the stuff. The Bigfoot but... one day, all excited, and we put that in. <laughs> That's the bomb. Tom set him up for success. It was set up for success. Yep. I make, I, you know, I do, uh, I'm really raw. Like I said, man, I do very little feeding. I don't like to do too much, and I just, you know, you set them in motion, and that's the key. So by the way, water those things because their cups are going to get dry. And we should, so part of the reason why I was psyched to kill everything was so we can start transplanting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Those things out of the solo cups. Yeah, totally. yeah. We put exactly. away the, the chopper here. Well, there's some, some well, he, but again, we're still, we're putting them into the bags, you but can. those are okay for Winter now. Winter time, going That's into fine. fall, this you're better is, off. That's the, right. we, we've passed the peak valley. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Heat yeah. season. Also known as the summer you guys see those trees out there yes the big ones out there you see how they were they're up on a mound Fuck, fucking things right there <laughs> every time you can say it every time I, I can say it without even looking you know what i mean no matter what it's like always the case it is and in nature in the forest that's the tree that lives to be 200 or 300 or 3000 or whatever it is you know that's the one that was planted amongst the others that was just in the right little hill at the right. Looking at that, how old would you, could you, could you think? What is it? That is a, a liquid amber tree. Which um, one? The one out front, the huge one? Yeah. Liquid amber. It loses its leaves in the fall. It gets really colorful. Uh, it's like our fall maple tree is our look-alike, right? It's a really invasive plant. breaks up everything and gets into the sewers. It's an awesome tree, though, man. It's a. It supports so much light. It does so much. It really does. It's a great tree for like the middle of a park and everything. But yeah. it's a crazy tree. They planted a bunch of these back in the day, especially in LA and in San Diego, for the color. And they planted them on the neighborhood roads. And when you drive down the roads and some of these old ones, you see all these, you know, cool, colorful things and stuff. But yeah, man, they're just so their roots are insane, and that thing's <laughs> yeah. got to be, you know, I mean, it's got to be. I don't know when this house was built, but I'd say. That thing's a 70-year-old tree, probably. Yeah. I'd say 60 years old, 70 years old, 60 years old, right around there, because they grow fast. They're not really Ballpark, uh, how many seeds are in here? Uh, somewhere between 7 and 15. Okay. So, so some are so 7, Tom, some are 15. You, uh, it just depends on what I had left of I'm certain gonna things. I'm going to put some into here, and you can 
So basically all I do is I take just like a short cup, I put a little bit of water in and I drop the seeds in the top, they'll float. And then like 24 hours or 48, you know, 24 to 36 hours later, we can literally just put them right into soil. Like that's, that's the next stage, those solo cups. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, those Hubbles, those are uh, like something in those, in those genes are making that thing like slow to grow. So if you germinate them, um, germinate, you know, germinate those ones because three or three might, th two might not go. They're just, they're honor. They're like got this weird, they're, 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 they're very selective. Some of the land race stuff, like it's a land race trait where they don't want to grow right away. They want to sit dormant, and sometimes those recessive traits kind of pop up, and it, you know, it's just a weird. That's not a bad thing because when they take, they really. Take. They take, and I guess those are some of the best, like, unique plants you'll find is in that in that Hubble stuff. Something a little different that nobody does. So um, I'll pop a bunch, and then. Uh, but those are also the yeah. shittiest germ-rated seeds that I that I had because those are the last ones there's not that many I was just giving you guys something that's really good that I well, knew would have, be good you get something sweet it. out of but there's not even any more I don't have any of the banks anymore because they're all that's it they're I'm working on the next generation <laughs> um now are you con are you constantly are you have stuff going on all the time well you're not in you're only outside so you don't have I have, yeah, I have continues for the most part, yeah, yeah. So Is that yeah, a phone? yeah, it's my phone. Uh, I was like, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, like I like, cause I have I have plants that are you know seven, eight, nine, ten years old. You know, I have clones that I've kept for years. You know, so always in my like so in the summer, I, in the summer they come out cause they're old, and by coming out and going into the ground, they can tap into the earth fully regenerate and rejuvenate and like a lot of the old heads have always said oh if you take them outside you can rejuvenate them and i've been just i i fully am a believer in that like they rejuvenate them back to freaking brand new you know what i mean you'll get these big thick healthy branches and growth and then you can take the clones off of that right and, and then those will be your new moms those are your the new next moms season. that go inside sitting for how long the what seeds no, so those are just the plant. Those are just the plant for the mom. mom. Yeah, so like yeah. those ones will go inside, and then over the winter time, basically keeping carbon copies of that. Yeah, mom you have to for generations. There's always generation. something alive because you can't lose those because those are making those are those are those are my flagships. And then in the winter time, because even cold, a seed from that will express itself slightly differently. Yeah, or yeah, it's nothing that's just like that. Yeah, right. it's just like me or you. If you have. 50 kids none of them are going to be you Tom there's never going to you know be another I mean? Tom you know? Hines. so that's yeah they'll be close Goodness. but none of them will be you yeah <laughs> you know and that's it that's it will never you can you can get close but you never get you um so you got that you got the clone and then in the winter times when I do a lot of like like my seed tests and my quick looks because it's all quick and small and you can do things in like one gallon pots and two gallon pots and I can kind of get them to all my other friends and we can kind of go through a bunch of stuff indoors and pick out the good guys that we think are going to be good guys to put outside for the full season and then we run them full term and then when they're really awesome either those will get seeds or those will be whatever that's that's how they kind of get get vetted so there's always something going because I always have to look at stuff because I've got too many coolers of seeds that I'll never get to, no matter how much I do it. You know what I mean? How many people I invest in, like, please do these ones for me and do these ones for me, you know what I mean? Because you can't do it all, you know, you can't. And then until they can, until we, you know, we, we really have cannabis freedom, you know what I mean? There's no way to, you know, to really do it the way we need to. So, um, <laughs> it is Do you guys ever pick these? Yes. <laughs> He's like, that, I'm waiting that, for that it. One's that, one's <laughs> on. that, that one's beyond right. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, so. The, the bright one, are you sure? The, 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 this one. one. This one's, you could take this one. Yeah. And one plant will be completely different inside compared to outside. <laughs> this they one, express this themselves completely oozy, different. You know? you know, sometimes it's like, wow, this is the greatest indoor thing in the world. You put it outside and it's like, no, this is dog shit. Time you should make sun dry. You know, and then vice versa, you know, so you got, it's, you got to have it all the way going. You got to go it all the time. Yeah. All right. Well, should we wrap on that? <laughs> the Tom clap, the Tom outro clap. The signature. The intro and the outro clap. Um, yeah, and definitely kill this thing. Th this thing is not going to do any good besides bring pests in. It's basically a plant that some dude was growing at his house poorly.
that he was then like, let me put it in the middle of all your plants. I love it. Right, so kill it. He was being nice, yeah. <laughs> It'll cost you. And what's this, Tom? Do you remember what this one is? That's in the, sh in the dark. Oh. <laughs> it's dead. Right, so you can cut this so we can use all these things for new plants. Where you can, yeah, I'll let you do that. Uh, okay.